It's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to an encore, another one. We're doing them every weekend now, off the chain until I get them back live. This is episode 56, first streamed on February 8th of this year, 2021. Check it out. We had a blast. I had my guy Trek with two Ks on, Alan Henna, of course, 10 pounds snuck in there, and my main guy from the D313, King Bless. From the gentleman of crypto so enjoy make sure you guys like share and subscribe and give me those thumbs up if you want to see more content like this every weekend i'm going to get it started i'm out of here Holla. yes yeah, your boy crypto blood hope everyone's doing well tonight we're getting it in tonight off the chain episode 56 we got Trek with two K's, a newcomer. He's been on my show before. I've been on their show. The gentleman of crypto, King Bless, one half of gentlemen of crypto, will be on with us tonight. And we got Alan Hanna. We always love his candid remarks regarding everything crypto. So enjoy, sit back, relax. We're gonna get started here in a second. Shout out to everyone in the chat rooms. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get it. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be talking about Tesla buying a billion and a half worth of Bitcoin. I'm going to give you my thoughts on that. I think they already bought it. This is definitely a, you know, tell you after the fact type of situation. We also got Celeb Shilling Dog Coin again. We got Snoop Doge is his name now, I guess. <laughs> Snoop Doge or aka Snoop Dog is now a Dogecoin believer. And of course, Elon Musk again added on Twitter with the Dogecoin shilling. NFT sales on Ethereum hitting $80 million worth of sales. This is going crazy. And we got some real monkey wrench type of articles tonight. One from an astronomer that's saying that aliens have visited us. We'll try to get to that if we can. Interesting topic though for sure. Make sure you guys stick around. Yeah. <laughs> Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. Right. Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. Okay. Yeah, we're doing it live tonight, people. How is everyone doing? I got uh, some of my crypto friends in the house. One is from the D. Detroit 313 area. Let's get him in first. Show him some love. King Bless. What's good? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the hole. I'm going through the hole. Who, who, really, who really from the D? We about to find out. We really hey, even new school. You know, hit him with the new yeah, new, yeah, yeah. Hit him with the hit him with really the, from the, the city. Base, what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, King Bless? If you guys aren't familiar with King, he is the uh, one half of the gentleman of crypto. They do shows every day. What's going on, brother? Hey, thanks for having me, CB. As always, happy to be back, man. It's been way too long. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, you guys know this one, 10 Pound. Hey, what's He's going on? He's in the on? building. What's, go what's going on, 10 Pound? Hey, how y'all doing, man? I'm just over here kicking it, chilling. Yo, good All to right. have, be back. Yo, I appreciate you. For thanks sure, for, for sure. Up. Absolutely. And last but not least, maybe least, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He he kind of gave some EOS some love in the chat room in, in the hey, Twitter DM. You know. So we're gonna talk about that one, bro. All right. Okay. <laughs> Alan Hanna, what's going on, man? Hey, man. What's up? Yeah, Thanks for yeah. having me back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm doing it tonight, guys, because you know, we had the Super Bowl last night. I didn't want to interrupt, yeah. you know, that greatness that was on display. Seven rings, fellas. No Tom, Tom Brady, no the, is the he the goat ever. or is he the, the goat? Greatest, just, greatest ever. That's just. Yeah. Uh, is there any sweeter justice than a team? Your team of your entire career be like, nah, and then you come back, go to another conference, and win. There's nothing better. There's nothing. I better. mean, bro, let's just hope that uh, he didn't deflate some of those footballs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Yo, how on. you guys spend? <laughs> just kidding. This is a joke, bro. But still. Uh, I got to ask, though, what do you guys think about uh, the sort of like outrage about him supporting Trump and not wearing a mask? Who like, cares? Bro, I know, Who right? Cares? That's what I'm saying. Who cares? Like, Who cares? Bro, apparently, half of America apparently... supported Trump. So let me right? you know. 
So you know? I always say that too. I, I tell people that in California, I'm like, the fact that people in the South don't understand Californians and the fact that Californians don't understand people in the South. Yeah. Is the but I was like, have the country voted for each people, each person. Right. Each person, yeah. right. You may yeah. hate them, but it, like, come on, man, 74 million something people voted for Trump, regardless of what you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's bro, not a fool. People, bro, people just love outrage, man. That's why I'm convinced. Like, people, they just love outrage. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, is he the goat of goats? Like, oh, I have yeah. to, yeah. at this yeah. point, yeah, yeah I have to put better. him above Jordan. Name what? Oh, you talking about sports? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh no, like, I don't know about that. I was talking oh, about football. Wait a minute. Oh. I'm talking about no football, okay, but if you start talking about all sports, that's a different conversation. I oh, it is, bro. He, he yeah, he's been to ten out of the fifty Super Bowls. I don't think yeah, he won you know, seven you know, bro, of them. The hardest thing to get in sports, almost like granted, I, you know, you got Mayweather fifty, you know, you got Tiger Woods, but talking about multiple Super Bowls, two dynasties, seven now out of ten, that's crazy. Yeah, Bitcoin Ooh. is the goat. Ben, yeah, Ben, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Ben. What's going on, Bitcoin Ben? He said Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the go. You are absolutely right about that, Bitcoin mm -hmm. Ben. So Bitcoin. yeah, I don't know, uh, Alan. I think I think your boy is is supersedes all athletes at this point. It's I mean, arguable. It's arguable. I, I'm not saying it's. I'm saying no, but it's arguable. It's not like you like Charles Barkley is the greatest athlete ever. And we're all like, hell no, that ain't the case. Right. You know, right. Man? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. So um, tonight, guys, we have a nice list of topics to talk about. Where do you guys want to start? Dogecoin? Let's Tesla? Talk about the yeah, let's talk about the Dogecoin. Dogecoin. The, Dogecoin. Yeah, Doge, wow. yo, Dogecoin won the Super Bowl. All right, that's Doge. the way it is. <laughs> hey, man. That's like Dogecoin eighth ring. He got more rings yeah. than Tom Brady. Yeah. You know what's mm -hmm. you know what's funny to me about Dogecoin? I don't have any. I've never even owned Dogecoin, but I love the fact that it seems to be a lot driven by like network effect, people, hype, TikTok, mm -hmm. social media. Like w that's great to me. I don't really care what coin it happens on, but that's great. And people are hating on it. I'm like, man, when you get a demonstration of network effect, people that are sort of organizing and coalescing together, that's that's great. Bro, people are going to start buying their Teslas with Dogecoin. I'm telling yeah. you. you know? it, it's serious. To me, it's a serious. Mm -hmm. People like the joke. It's a serious crypto. Bless. I, what do you, what do you, King? What do you think about this yeah. Dogecoin uh, shilling? And, and we got Snoop Dogg. Now he's Snoop Doge. Is this, da <laughs> is this dangerous? Is this dangerous no. or, or what? I'm going to sound like the old man in the room because... When it comes to snooping them, I am like, that's not the way you can do crypto. Like, what are you all doing? Like, it's not about celebrities type of deal. Uh, but just doge, you know, so I do think that part is dangerous. To me, when you see celebrities start snoop doge and all that, to me, it says top. And for doge, we right. may have seen, even if it's no. a, even if it's a 48 hour, 72 hour one, we may have seen a quick little little, little top for me. Uh, I went ahead and trade out of, out of it today. I've been telling people about right. doge now for years what? as uh, strictly more of a pump and dump coin, not necessarily a pump and dump coin. I don't want to say like that, but you know, I've told people like Doge has a community around it. If you ever lurked on Bitcoin forum and stuff, especially before 2017, you know, that forum was super active when it came to Doge. So my thing is they always have a community. It will always be a pump and dump involved in Doge. The last few weeks, however, really the last couple of months, I've been telling people about Doge uh, is because as the market was gearing up for this big bull run we've been seeing, I was like, I guarantee you almost it's going to pump. I've been telling people that in the last few weeks. Uh, and then after seeing it the last two weeks, again, I told people about last week, the pump happened. It dipped back down to three cents. Uh, told people again, I'm like, it's not done. We just saw eight cents. I think right now in the short term, we are done with Doge. I think it will run out of steam. If not right now, maybe at around nine or 10 or 11 cents. But I, as I told people also, when it was at a penny and it went to three cents to eight cents or whatever, and then back down, I was like, I actually do see it going to a dollar because of market psychology. People are trading it based on the price of it, not knowing anything about the fundamentals or the you know how it's trended in the past. We actually pulled up the chart today. All it does is pump and dump throughout its history. So with that being said, is on all these exchanges, people think it's a cheap buy. I think they were going to pump it up to 10 cents, which we essentially saw at eight, nine cents. And once it hits 10 cents, it's going to eventually hit a dollar, if not uh, later this year than in next year. But it will hit a dollar just off of market psychology itself. It's crazy. I see no you, cap. You, got a nice, you got a smart, smart guy. Is that me? Oh. Um, 
I agree with everything you said about about Doge. Like it could easily hit a dollar. You know, um, market psychology is not just always about the fundamentals. To me, market psychology, money, and all that—that's all fundamentals as well. So I can see Doge hitting a dollar. I don't own it. I don't intend to buy it, but I can see it hitting a dollar for sure. Not you know within ten pounds, a dollar. On those, uh, y'all crazy, bro. Yeah, y'all crazy I, on that one. Dude, I don't think it's gonna hit a dollar, maybe 50 cents. But yo, a dollar, bro. The what dollar, bro. Let me ask you me out, bro. bro. The, price, the price floor is five cents. Okay, five cents. That's what they're spreading around social media. If it gets below five cents, you gotta buy that shit up. Like, that's that's the cult mentality of this coin right now. That's the price floor. Bro, the absolute hold on. price floor. I, I, I just want to show, I just want to show you guys. On that whole dot, see, a lot of people don't realize that. So Dogecoin changed their their like um, their their settings in their in their uh, core wallet many years ago when they merged mine with uh, Litecoin. I don't know if you guys are familiar with you know Doge merged mine with Litecoin, but at that point, I think it's got an inflationary uh, five million tokens a year. Just yep, perpetually, yeah, yeah. right? Perpetually, no cap, no, no cap. cap. No cap, and I ain't cap. So, what? so, so that goes back to what I was. Oh, go ahead, real Alan. I mean, interrupt you. No, no, I'm just saying to me that's really irrelevant. Exactly, I was gonna say the same thing. Is that that's why I was like, go ahead. My thing is, I agree with you. Like from a TA and a, and a fundamental perspective, well, not necessarily a full fundamental, but how we usually look at uh, crypto from fundamental perspective, Dogecoin does not fit the bill. It should not be rising in price like it is. However, it should never have gotten a ten cent. It should not have gotten a five cent. And that's these, why I told you when true it started, statements. These are true statements. When it started pumping, and it was already, you know, when it pumped to two to three cent, I was like, if this thing, it could go to 10, because I was at three. I already know how market psychology is. I was like, if it goes to 10, you better believe it's going to the dollar. Not saying it won't take another year or so after that. Like I said, I just got out of Doge today. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I do think I might be going back into it this weekend. I think we'll see a nice dip this weekend, like you said, to maybe that five cent mark. And who knows, those who buy it again at the four to five cent mark might be holders for the next six months. But again, with the way the market is right now, as aggressive as it is, with as much Doge, Doge coins everywhere, video games and stuff, the TikTok thing, I think it's just such an easy buy. It doesn't make sense. We could see it keep pumping. Yep. I, I don't I don't disagree. Uh, however, if we take a look at, I, I know you don't, you know, we're, we're in the realm of real like over exuberance we're just irrational with everything right now but come on fellas we got a Hold market on. we got a market it, we, got a, we, we got a we got a circulating supply of 128 <laughs> billion tokens irrelevant kids don't irrelevant. know it nine-year-olds don't know that hear me out <laughs> turtle dude parents credit bro. card yo hear me out bro turtle coin is going to hit a dollar before dogecoin hits a dollar I'll die I, on that I hill, trust your judgment. I'm gonna bookmark that too. I'm I like not to. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna remember that one. I don't even know nothing about turtle. I don't. I'm know getting anything. I'm getting in turtle coin tonight because you said that ten pound. Yo, hey, bro, yeah. this is not financial Yo. advice. Turtle coin is gonna hit a dollar before those play hits a dollar, bro. Y'all are about as bad as those XRP army cats talking about what uh, thirty dollar. What do they call it? Hundred dollar XRP. Okay, on, uh -huh. fellas, we got to keep it in the realm of. Of just reality, a hundred and twenty eight billion total because Who you have, cares? It, ha it, it, it has to the market has to price it correctly, and for it to get there, okay, yeah, okay, a dollar, a dollar a Doge coin, but what what is Bitcoin at if if we got a dollar Doge? Okay, coin? let me let me ask you this: Is Doge coin on Coinbase yet? No. All right then, there we go. Ooh, you're right. <laughs> I mean, bro, yeah, you got a good point, though, Alan. Like, seriously, they listed XRP on, before they listed Dogecoin. Like, see, Dude, <laughs> look, look how that turned point. out. Come on. I mean, I, I'm with you, and you're right. I told people today, and this is why I, I, I exited the position today. I said, if at Dogecoin at 8 cent, or as I just saw Red River Post put, bought Doge at 0 0.023. So still, he essentially, or this person entered the game late on Doge at 2 cent. So at eight cent, rode into a, a Tesla weekly call spread holla. So great, great calls <laughs> they just made. But as I was telling people on our show today, I was like, eight cent Doge to me is the same as forty five thousand dollar Bitcoin. I'm taking some off the top. All right, uh, I think again we will see this thing retrace. I think it still might go possibly to ten or eleven, but we'll see it retrace soon. 
Um, and then that's why I might consider going back into it. But again, this stuff doesn't make sense. I agree with all of you, but it shouldn't have hit eight cent. That's my thing. Like it shouldn't even been there. So yeah, I get what you're saying. But I, I, I would say King at, at what's it at now, right? Ten billion dollar market cap. That right. is the don't make sense part. Like we're 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 there. We've arrived. Right. What did it replace today, too? It replaced B Cash, right? B Cash is officially out. We were smoking on that B Cash pack today. They are oh, good, right? no smoke on the B Cash. I've been loading up on B Cash. You know why? Because it hasn't pumped yet. So no, I'm not, I'm not giving financial good advice. Point, I have low, I've been loading for the man, last man. month. It's been in the four hundred dollar range. Bitcoin Cash is going to be that next one. That everyone, no. it's so much money running around. Okay, okay so why, on, why, 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 why not Bitcoin Cash, Allen, but Dogecoin? I'm confused because this. I'll tell you why. Network effect, right? All the things we already listed: TikTok, social media, celebrities. No one's got that going for Bitcoin Cash right now. Listen, I was, I chose the Bitcoin Cash side of the debate. When they were doing Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and the block size and all that stuff, I was all about Bitcoin Cash. But all I've seen since then, since I entered the space, is a bunch of nothing, a bunch of nonsense from Bitcoin Cash. They haven't added smart contracts. They barely added tokens. It's like, no, there's no community like that behind it. But that means that's why Doge passed it. Mm. I, you know, Litecoin's next. You know, mm. why is Litecoin even in the top 10? Mm. I don't know. It's trying. King, King, King. <laughs> Throwing just shots saying, at him. Man. What's your I'm, thought? I'm with him. Uh, for me, Bcash, I just, I don't understand. I, I Now, I am with you, Crypto Blood, from a trading perspective. Just purely like, trading? Just just the, the, the name, you. right? If the it ain't Bitcoin, pump yet, it's game time. It I'm not game time. Tonight too, because yeah. you are correct about that. The chance of it not pumping at all, Come 10 on or 15%. Now. 10x. No, 10x. <laughs> Oh, listen. oh, no. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Hell no. That ain't happening. I didn't sign up for that, Alan. Alan, I did not sign up for that. 10X, Al. Listen. No. I'm going to no. tell you. Listen. No way. When Bitcoin, li listen, when Bitcoin was at 20,000 back in, two, in 2017, guess where Bitcoin Cash was? I remember that hype, man. I remember all of it. I remember Bitcoin when Cash was at $3,500, $3,800. I remember that. I remember. But my point is that, like, the last three years, Bitcoin Cash has developed, like, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I agree. This is I not a, this is not a okay. fundamental. This is not a fundamental play just like Dogecoin isn't. This is Dude, yeah, but simply, Dogecoin, yeah, but see, you're, you're ignoring, Mark, you're ignoring network effect. You're ignoring social uh, uh media celebrities mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh it's it's completely different for doge i don't see i hear you from bitcoin cash see, you can't just say it's like doge because doge has some sort of a digital community behind it. it's completely different john hill says my man default says bitcoin cash 5k by keep the praying. Keep praying on that one <laughs> <laughs> i would say keep praying too i am going to shout out your uh, commenter fast nickel mv don't tell anybody that's what i haven't mentioned recently but i've been watching it too i have been watching digibyte is back in the mix i don't think it's a real project to be real i don't think it's gonna last <laughs> they're good for a pump and i think last time i checked they were hey, a couple di at least oh, digibyte, a real project. digibyte is a real project so i think they were good for a pump all right weren't they in the top 10 a few years ago too look i don't got time to keep up with the old coins now <laughs> 10 pound what's your thoughts on uh bitcoin cash and, and possibly pumping next roger ver bitcoin jesus that man did his very best to start a hash war to literally substantiate them block sizes right mm -hmm. okay and let's not forget abc bch abc no, i ain't messing and with that of course not nobody is <laughs> but that's a fork that came out of the bitcoin cash community right of course like still like it's not even in the top 50 no more. Like it completely disappeared. Like where'd it go? We just it pulled the Houdini, bro. Okay, it, where it, it exit, I, I gotta speaking left. of where did it go? Where is Roger Ver? I haven't seen him on the scene in a there. minute, he right? Out mm -hmm. He out there. He doing Her stuff. CP. That's what I was yeah, gonna tell is. you. Get your money for it's too late. All right. Don't nobody know where he is, and we know where the no, where the no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> I like Roger Ver. I think he's a legit guy. I think he means best. He may have made some mistakes, but that doesn't mean it, that his intent wasn't in a good place. I just don't think that Roger is someone that knows. 
he knows how to do one thing and he knows the mission of how he sees Bitcoin. He doesn't really know how to do a whole lot of other things, which is fine. I, you know, he brought a lot of people into this space. But once again, I just don't think Bitcoin Cash has done anything to distinguish itself from Bitcoin. And at a certain point, what they should have done was said, all right, forget we're, we're the real Bitcoin. It should have been like, this is what Bitcoin Cash is. And just for, forgot what Bitcoin was doing and just sort of focused on building their own tech out and forgot that whole war. And they still, I went to their Reddit the um like two months ago and they're still having an argument. I'm like, hey man, like this is past. Like y'all lost, y'all lost, lost the social consensus on the real Bitcoin. It's over, give up. But they, mm. they still win, so. Interesting, interesting. Mm. I yeah, hear you. in it for the long haul, man. Like it's a cult. They're all cults, man. Yeah. Like like Alan said, I think we forget though. Roger Bear did bring a lot of people into this space through yeah, business. He did. So I personally thought when he created Bcash until to this day now, today, like days like this is what Bcash was made for. It wasn't made to displace Bitcoin. Roger Bear is a businessman. It was made so that a bank or institution or one of these governments could say, This is the way we want to go about it. He doesn't care if it's all a million of them or just one of them. And they cash them out. I feel like that's why he made it. And uh, I just don't see anybody cashing out on it now, especially when everybody's trying to have their CBDC. I so think more so it was for like, uh, you know, consumer great operations like uh, grocery stores and whatnot. I think that was a narrative. Yeah, that was a narrative. Yeah, it was a narrative. But I hope that was true. I don't know who all knows it was true because Roger Ver, you're oh. right. You brought a lot of people into the space. So nothing negative like that. But I mean, he was involved in that whole, like you said, the fork, the Segway 2X fiasco. Yep. That was an ugly time. The New York mm -hmm. agreement in the hotel. Like, what's going on here? Yep. Yeah, but, but so hold on. The way I look at it with, like I said, I actually met him once in St. Kitts at a conference. I think he's a very genuine person. Like I said, he may have made mistakes, but I think he's just focused on this mission of, Un, you know, money you can't censor, no government. He's a hardcore libertarian. We actually got into a big debate about some libertarian arguments. I'm surprised. Just I'm surprised. Yeah. No, but I'm my surprised. point is, he's just like hardcore like that. So you yeah. can't, just because you disagree with him, I don't right. think it's a reason to paint him as somebody nefarious or his intent is, he has malintent. I don't think that's the case at all, actually. That's good hearing it coming from you then, for sure. Yeah. yeah that you met him. Yeah, yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about him, honestly. Shout out to Bitcoin, the ex Bitcoin Jesus still, but shout out to ex Bitcoin Jesus. <laughs> yeah, whoop your ass too. I hear he's uh good with the arts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said, oh, what did you say? You know, I didn't catch that all the way. Now yeah. I just process it. Yeah, big uh, Roger Verse is good with those hands, man. He that's what's up, he, man. He, I didn't go to UFC. I went to the military. <laughs> <laughs> we got. Trek with two K's in the house now. All right, what's up, what's up Trek? He had some technical bad, difficulties. <clears throat> what up? You Welcome all right there, big fella? What is going I, on? I, I guess not. <laughs> Yo, bro, you got COVID right now, man? Like, he does good? have COVID. He does what have hell? COVID. What the hell? <laughs> oh, shit, man. This is like a, a hidden camera situation right now. We're just watching him in his studio. Man, don't you do, want to hide him then? And yeah, don't do, no <laughs> don't do nothing crazy there, big Come fella. On, we'll bro, you got COVID right now, man? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the echo. <laughs> the hold on, hold on. Yo, like. Look at Trek. Trek looks like a black yeah. Unabomber right now. Y'all suck right now, but. The epic scroll back. He's like two minutes back in time, man. What's going on? The chain, like. I went up to work upstairs and now I'm bringing my stuff back downstairs and something happened. So, yo, cut me off for a second so I can figure out what's going on with my setup right now. Because I had to redo oh stuff. Oh my now. God, bro. This guy's echo was like a light year behind. Right. Mm -hmm. Man. So, before we get off the subject of Doge, I, I want to talk about Mark Cuban. Now, all of you probably know him. Mm -hmm. This guy has been bashing Bitcoin for ages. You know that King Bless. I'm glad you brought it. See, people are forgetting the narratives. There we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. He's been he's been bashing them for years. 
And now all of a sudden he's got the unmitigated gall to say that Dogecoin is not a bad look for investors. What do you guys think about that? That is to me very irresponsible. Hold on, wait a minute though. Why are you saying that? Because like, Dogecoin is a meme coin, right? It's yeah, a pump and dump. It's a pump and dump, okay. and it will be dumped. Let, let so, me ask you something. Let okay. me ask you something. Do you agree that all cryptocurrencies are are basically some function of a network effect in communities? Yes. Okay. So any any coin could have enough of a network effect in the community behind it, right? So you can't just say, because people say it's a meme coin, really fundamentally, what does it do uh, besides the inflation versus deflation <clears throat> debate? What does it do that Bitcoin doesn't? Right. Well, what does Bitcoin do that it does? I mean, the only difference is liquidity. What do you, what do you guys think about right. that? He's right though. The only difference is liquidity. And yeah, the fact that the, the supply cap as well, like that's about it. Only two fundamental principles. I mean, that's so, really so mad. are you are you then saying, Alan and Ten Pound, that Bitcoin and Doge have the same risk? Yes, in no. certain regards. Okay, okay. No. So, <laughs> uh, I didn't put you in, I, I'm playing four D chess on you now, Alan. No, but let me finish. But what I'm saying is, you can't. Yeah, they don't have the same risk. Once again, that's really tied to liquidity. Okay. At the same time, yeah, yeah. You, that, just because basically what you're saying is because something is riskier than Bitcoin, then it shouldn't be bought. Because would you say that some say Ethereum is riskier than Bitcoin? Should we nobody have recommend you buy Ethereum or EOS? Trek, you, you, you back on you back in fourth dimension or third or oh, no. Can't hear him. this guy, man. Can't hear you, bro. All right, there we go. There yeah. we go. What's up, Trek? I've had like the most ultimate just being slow today when it comes to technology. Yeah. Thank y'all for um dealing with my BS right now. And I want to say thank you to Ken Bosat because you dealt with me this morning, bro. I was oh, yeah. frustrating the hell out of him. But I'll tell y'all about you, that later. You were on his stream earlier? No, no we were doing a one-on-one -on -one about oh, okay. some stuff. Okay. So, Shout yeah, out he, to Ken Bozak. I'll be on his channel tomorrow. All right. Check that out. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back to these shots. I'm hearing a lot of folks. I'm hearing laughing. I'm seeing people jump. I'm hearing shots being taken to different coins. You know I'm not a price person, but I will jump in on some taking shots. Uh-oh. We're talking about Doge right now, brother. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, now we got Mark Cuban. He's saying that this is not a bad look as far as an investment. This is coming from Mark Cuban. So, you know, people are going to listen to him. The investment class are going to listen to him and, and, and go into this Dogecoin. When we all know we've been in this space, you got Tim Pound and Allen saying that there's really no difference between Bitcoin and Dogecoin other than liquidity. Um, <laughs> what's your thought? I, I get where they're coming from, but it is what it is. Dogecoin doesn't have as big of a market as Bitcoin does. So there inherently is more risk holding Dogecoin and telling people to go out here and buy Dogecoin as a person like Mark Cuban. I think it's irresponsible. What's your but you thought? Didn't, but that's not the way you presented it, though. You presented it as inherently like a bad move to the equivalent of him recommending some coin that's got a hundred thousand, yeah. you know, market cap or something like that. Right. There's a there's a, there's a difference there. It, the, the coin hasn't been in the top 20 for a while. You got it's been around for almost longer than all the coins. It's the third, it's the, um, not the third, uh, oldest coin, but yeah, it's been a, it's the second, it's the second so, script, uh, coin aside yeah, from Litecoin. You presented like he was doing something like, like, I think, I think, I think it just, it to me, it shows that that's the top and possibly top in, in Doge markets, uh, to me. When you have people like Mark Cuban, you got Snoop Doge. You got, I mean, this guy, uh, Gene Elon Simmons. Musk is just, he, I don't know how yeah. he doesn't go to jail for the okay. way he shields so, stuff on Twitter. Mark Cuban is trying to troll like Elon is. Mm. Bottom line. That's how mm. I look at it. Elon is just really good at doing it because he's seen as like the outskirts or like the unpopular, not, not, he's popular, yes, but he's seen as the, as the, 
personality who doesn't necessarily follow all the rules. He does his own things. So he can get away with saying and doing certain things in, in his traditional VC world space, the tech space, the, the space economy thing. He can mess around over here in this crypto thing. Here comes Mark Cuban, the guy who is known as the VC person, and he's connected to the sports stuff. And he's just jumping in trying to run on Elon's coattails in my, in my little two cents. Why? Because they see the reaction Elon is getting. Mark's put out a, um, a poll the other day. I think it was like a week or two weeks ago. And I took it as a, you're trying to figure out how to understand how this new retail lever men mentality is running. Because it's not meeting any of the traditional um, metrics of how you measure like, well, where are people putting their attention or their money in? Um, and I think that's what he's trying to figure out. But whoever he's talking to, if he don't got the same people as Elon or like he, he just not an Elon. Like, and I'm not saying that makes him better because I'm not really a fan of what Elon is doing either. But that's how I look at that situation. He's trying to get on that wave that Elon's riding. What are, you, what are your thoughts about, uh, well, before before we jump onto Elon, because that's a whole nother subject, I just want to highlight this quote from Mr. Cuban. He says, Doge gives you a better chance of winning that, than a lottery ticket, all while teaching the economics of supply and demand and introducing people to crypto assets. What are your thoughts? I mean, I agree, I agree with him wholeheartedly. This is a valid comment. Mm -hmm. Is it a valid comment? It is. It's, okay, okay. It's a valid comment, but you're having this come from someone who is in traditional finance. We could talk all we want about like what charts and stuff look like, but at the end of the day, like we've been around long enough to know the community and how they move doesn't follow traditional metrics and finance and stuff. So like, to be like, like, I'm not saying no, you won't learn some lessons about how, um, you know, economics and supply work, but this isn't that traditional stuff. You, it's like you trying to tell somebody how to um, build a house, but you telling them like, hey, you can learn how to do it by like looking at how to put a bike together. Like you learning how to build something, but it's not the same equivalent stuff. Mm. Just because of how this community is, like in Dogecoin in particular, like I was in um, a LinkedIn thread and somebody was talking about how they were trying to do an atomic swap with um, with Doge. And they had their people go in, their devs go in and look at the code. And they was like, yo, this is just bananas. We can't do nothing with this. OK, so what? And <laughs> so, what? so what? I'm just saying, look, we already said it, at least me and 10 pound agree that there's really fun. Like you can't do anything with Bitcoin that you can you can't do with Doge. They're just they're peer to peer uh, cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin has much larger market cap. Right. But you're ignoring network effects. You're ignoring communities and saying like, oh, like Doge is dumb. So if Doge is dumb, no, no, no. I'm not saying Doge is dumb. I'm not okay. saying Doge is dumb. What I I'm am. Is the people who are God commenting on this <laughs> don't know about it, and and they don't they aren't acknowledging how the community works to affect the price stuff. That's what I'm saying. Now that's a good I point. I think they're very well aware. Of, I think Elon Musk, Mark Cuban, I think all these guys, they're not dumb. They know what they're doing. Okay. At the same time, you can't also pretend that communities. And the way we socialize and interact is the same as it was five, 10 years ago. It's different. I don't know. So we could be in the middle of something. This could be part of transition. I'm not saying Doge is now about to go to number one, but we got to get out of this habit of just striking down something because it doesn't fit the narrative that we necessarily bought into initially. Until someone shows me what Doge, what's so bad about Doge, I'm not going to say it's, it's a bad project or a bad coin. If a lot of people like it, so what? It's not. It's not so much what's bad with Doge. It's what's what is what's good with it. What what's so good about Doge? 
in my in my opinion is what i'm how i'm looking at it like i don't see any there's no marginal benefit there's no competitive advantage for doge to be where it is other than celebrities pumping it like if if wall street bets never pumped doge if elon musk that's the last true, three man. four years never pumped doge doge will be where where it was uh at a sub 20 ranking on on the coin market i'm sorry hey. Hey, so yo, that is what, literally what? all the value. You don't think TikTok what? is part of that? How yeah, yeah. The entertainment value. It's the entertainment value, ultimately. Like, yep, yeah. yeah. But that always has value. People but that never sticks. But, but those types of things, fellas, in my opinion, never stick. So if if you if it if if the value of a coin is solely from entertainment and celebrities pumping it, those cycles are short lived, and there's no fundamental underpinning to have that coin be at top 10 in the coin market rating. I'm sorry. You're going to have other coins that's going to eclipse that with actual utility and value. And to me, I just think it's it's irresponsible for a Mark Cuban, Cuban to do something like that. PB, can I jump yes, sir. in real quick? So um, in regards to answering this specific question about Mark Cuban saying what he said, if you can bring that quote up just so I can kind of remember it. Mm -hmm. um, I Let's see, what is it at? Uh, up a little bit more, I believe you had it. Oh, you're saying this actual right part? So, yeah, um, it's it gives you a better chance of winning a lottery ticket all while teaching econ uh, economics and supply and demand, introducing people to crypto assets. Uh, all right, I'm with Alan as far as like the statement in and of itself, or I think Tim Powell said the statement in and of, of itself is nothing wrong with that statement. But the problem of it is a few things. First of all, the timing of it. You like CBT right. are at giving this great news about Dogecoin at $3.30. When, when it's run 700% in a, in a month. Right. Come so on, man. Like, from that point of view, <laughs> you're especially going, being a celebrity. I've been in crypto too. You're, these people are going to get slaughtered. Whether it's a doubling from here, then down, because if they bought today, they're not going to sell when it doubles. They're going to hold thinking it's going to go to a dollar. So they're going but to lose all You can say that money. for anything. You can say that for any coin. What? <laughs> you have, you could say that for Litecoin. You could say that for Ethereum. You could say that for Bitcoin. Not any as, coin, as, not as much. I, you can but not as much, Alan, in my opinion, because there are fundamental un underpinnings with a Litecoin. You know, they're doing the Mimble Wimble. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're doing other things other than just being Litecoin. And no, they're not. Actually. No, they're not. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was going to say. So the other thing with Doge is that I mean, this is truly Doge is truly, uh, you know, the statement of crypto market. You make eighty percent of your money twenty percent of the time. So that's the other thing he's saying. That hey, you have a better chance of doing well with Doge than winning a lottery ticket. Then this is that's true. Not really, that's not. You don't really think that's true? true? I, I don't think, think it it's is. true. I think I, I I just think that was a, a irresponsible statement in general because for one, this is this is only the second. I'll say third time, and two have happened really in the last twelve months where Doge has aggressively pumped. All right. Um. I mean, if you go back and look at the charts, there is nonstop pump and dumps throughout this timeline. But yeah. for the most part, it's just dead. Pump and dump, dead, pump and dump, dead. Now, the social network and the networking effect is what's increasing the price for sure. And this is why I think Crypto Blood is saying, he's like, but they're not actually, you know, what are they working on? Who are they partnering with? Where are these projects? Whereas you do have a Litecoin or a Bitcoin or Ethereum actually digging in and, and working with partners. I see Doge only going up in price as long as this network effect continues. Now, that may be enough to be fair because no one asks for it to be put on Call of Duty. But Call of Duty put it on there, right? No one's asking for those to be on these things, but the network effect is taking care of that. So if the network effect continues the way it is, then yeah, maybe it won't it won't matter. It's just like trading marbles. If you take my marbles, they're worth something. It won't it matter. Will bless. It will but bless. if that I have to say, man, they partnered up with Pornhub. That is not necessarily partner, but you're right. Pornhub officially accepted uh Doge first, but now they're accepting all cryptos too. So again, mm -hmm. it gets back in that bread basket of cryptocurrencies. Uh, but again, I've always been a Doge fan because I'm like, hey, if one of the persons uses it, it does work, the network works. Again, I just think the irresponsible part is the timing of it. And then also, once again, once you look at the charts, other than the network effect, I don't think there's much going for it. But that might be enough. That might be all you need, right? So you can use Doge to watch porn doggy style. Exactly. Doge, dog. There you go. Okay. So let me say, let me say one thing. Let me say one thing. I'm on a bitinfocharts.com. <laughs> Doge, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. When I'm looking at unique addresses, yeah, they're all pretty close to each other. Okay. They're, 
they're all pretty close to each other. So this is the kind of stuff I look at. Sure. I'm looking at unique addresses and I'm seeing that it looks like actually Doge has more addresses than what's orange on here. Orange must be Bitcoin Cash. I'm just saying like, and you were just on here pumping Bitcoin Cash, CB. So I, I, look, yeah, I'm, my, I'm, I'm, I'm pumping. The, I'm, is, listen, I'm pumping Bitcoin Cash because it's not up 700 percent in a month. Okay, but <laughs> I'm, but high, but so I'm, a, tra I'm a trader. I'm not going to buy the top. Why is that not irresponsible? Because there's room. There's more room for it to go up. For you to for you to go out there and say Bitcoin, uh, go buy Doge when it's up 700, 800 percent in one month. Yeah, like I say, it could go up another, it could double from here. But your your risk to reward is out of is out how of whack, did, bro. How high did XRP get in the last bull market? Like uh, three dollars and uh forty-five cents from less than a penny. I will give them that. I will I'm just give them saying, that. Man. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> yeah. the limits on stuff. I remember it was point zero zero eight cent at one point, I think at the end of 2016. We had to pull the chart. I think Ripple it was, was like point zero zero eight twenty five or something. I know because I sold some of that top. But Ripple, it but again, on Coinbase. it was I, only, it was I, only as much as I don't like Ripple. As much as I don't like Ripple, Ripple actually has infrastructure. They were trying to do this and that. They were acquiring businesses. They were That's so true, the, the, the value of XRP. You, you, you were talking about the price though. You said how much can it go? And I'm saying if XRP. Could go to three twenty whatever that it was at the all time high, and why can't Doge go to three something? Why can't it go to a dollar? Because Wait, it, then saying? then the then the market cap be bigger than than Bitcoin. And, but and the XRP got that. to like to number two at one point. It was actually ahead of Ethereum at one. point. It did but, for but a quick minute. Was Ripple like like CB did say? I had to piggyback on that. That's important. I mean. They literally had banks buying in at the time. They had institutions buying in. They had a lot of buying in on it. Whereas right now, we're again, we're it could be possible, but we're hoping Doge does whatever it does based off a of network effect, more or less. Whereas, like, this wasn't a network effect, this was Ripple, like, yo, bank of whatever, I need you to put this money into our project, and they're actually doing it for whatever reason. I still don't know. <laughs> no, I listen, I've never even owned those, and I have no plan to own those, so I don't want anybody thinking like I'm trying to put my back. I've never <laughs> bought those, okay? I'm not having them, okay? All right, let's talk about uh. Elon February Musk. February tenth, twenty seventeen. Ripple is point zero zero six cent. I mean, I will give him that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sell phones all the time. Like you can make money in it, but like <laughs> it's one of those you gotta be paying attention. Oh, you know where I stand. Unless you're a full time trader, that is Doge. All this stuff is dangerous. Unless you trade and trade. It, it, it's I'm dangerous. It is dangerous. And like I said, for celebrities to be out there, it's kind of letting me know possible top. That's all I'm saying. Cosine. Maybe, and what a top means is another doubling from here. It is possible. That's crypto. We're in crypto. But let's talk about Elon Musk now, guys. He is, uh, wow, Tesla. This is big news to me. This is really big news. Tesla is investing or has invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. Who wants to go at this one? What does this mean? Is this a watershed moment? You know, Tesla is up there with Apple as far as one of those iconic, uh, brands for the world for America. What are your thoughts? Who wants to go at that? I'll, I'll take a swing at it with uh, you know, Bitcoin Zay was back on Fox News today again, a second time, that. right? Uh, what like a week or so ago, he was debating Gerber Kawasaki about Tesla versus Bitcoin, and then literally some of the things he said during the debate, it seems as though Elon Musk may have alluded to, which is pretty funny. Uh, but regardless, um, yeah, uh, of course, you know, we really thought. Tesla, not just Tesla, but every major company will be going toward Bitcoin because it just makes more sense for them to keep their money, not the money if they uh, money they want to actually spend on investments, but at least the money they make to keep it in Bitcoin reserves just makes sense, especially when you're a tech company, especially when Elon Musk has been saying things like, hey, the possibility of mining Bitcoin through a Tesla might be possible one day as well. So it's just one of those things where it made sense to me. Um and it's hey, he finally put his money where his mouth is. I want to say that for one, and then for two, was the Doge pump a pump fake for him in Bitcoin? That's the other thing. Who knows, right? <laughs> Shout so, out to Antonio from the UK. He actually said that on our show today. So I think it's great that he uh they got some crypto on the books. The way I look at it is just like 
I went and looked at what they said, and I think they're going to hold more. They said digital assets. Yes, so yes, they did. I think the idea that these companies are only going to grab uh, Bitcoin and stop there, I think is ludicrous if you actually believe any of that. I think they're going to diversify. So think about it. In crypto, they tell you to diversify unless you're like a maximalist and you only get like one coin. But my, the, the, the whole point is, they start here. Everybody's going on the same journey. It's just a different sort of timing, right? So I think Tesla, and when I say Tesla, I mean Tesla, the company, not Elon Musk, because those are two separate entities, even though he is the head of it. But I think Tesla is going to start with Bitcoin and go into others, just if anything is a diversification play to crypto, right? And then the difference is a company like Tesla, which is actually kind of like a tech company in some, some respects, you think about how they can integrate, you know, there's far more you can do when you integrate with an Ethereum, with a Cardano, with a Polkadot, right? Because those networks actually enable you to compose and build different things. So thinking big picture, I can see, you know, even though I'm saying it now, but that's, you know, everybody before was like, we just want companies, big companies to buy Bitcoin. But now it's kind of like, well, these companies could integrate these other networks which you can actually do stuff with into their network whether they're buying stuff or just a lot of different aspects so that's how i'm looking at it because they say i read the report it said digital asset so they're not going to stop it at bitcoin correct um <clears throat> so i ain't reading the articles uh i did catch something how irresponsible that... of you <laughs> <laughs> So when I look, when I, yo, I've been trying to get a handle on this clubhouse thing. So that's been taking up X amount of time. Oh no, not the degenerate Apple app. Oh come on, bro. bro. It's more this, than this, one DJs, man. You got that, a that's ton. A thing. That's a whole nother day we could jump in. <laughs> that's a whole nother yeah, let's just get some right. focus now. Yeah, bro, dude, I've been man, but, that's crazy, man. I've been having heart to heart moments with like angel investors and like, <laughs> Dude, yeah, and y'all talking about us for degenerates. Oh, y'all doing my ass dirty. Oh, I didn't say that. Um, but yo, know, but as far as this um Elon thing with the whole Tesla, like if we look at it from a standpoint of are we seeing adoption based on big name personalities and big name companies doing things? Yes, that's all great and gravy. But then you get into the whole thing about um the devils in the details. And from what I understand, like the way that they worded it out, it's like, yeah, it's a digital asset thing that we're looking at it in that framework. And then also for the purchasing part, they leave the room open to be like, we just going to uh, cash out on the back end. We'll take your crypto and then we just going to cash out on the back end. So to me, it's one of those like, all right, let's 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 wait and see how this play out. Now, if you talk about like, oh, well, from a technology and is the car going to be, or the vehicle going to eventually be able to mine crypto? You had people who was already doing that for like two years now, like mining um, Bitcoin and whatever other thing in their Teslas already. Um, so like, that's not a new, new thing. That's just, all right, now we're going to bring it in house and figure out how to do it this way. And I would argue they probably going to figure out to bring it in, but then take a cut of what you're doing. Cause now it's going to be officially sanctioned in their um um device right yeah. you know what i'm saying so like i mean i, I think would... go ahead Alan. no i'm just saying like the problem with with just the bitcoin aspect of this is that you can't really do anything i see people people i don't personally count adoption when it's just holding it not with cryptocurrency specifically right to me you gotta like use it within the network for something right to exchange the value for some other sort of capability or purpose so i until they start saying hey we're going to use bitcoin or any cryptocurrency within their ecosystem somehow yeah they put it on the books and some people that's enough for them but i look at use how are they going to use any any of the cryptocurrencies within whatever they're building but but it, the trend here alan is not using bitcoin as we see these companies are literally hoarding hoarding bitcoin as a as a hedge against the dollar dying All right. so i don't i don't well, i don't I, think that i don't, I don't think that narrative that, yeah i don't I, think that narrative of utilizing bitcoin for anything is is even 
even a, a valid one at this point. We see what's going on. Micro strategies. They're not using Bitcoin. They're just hodling Bitcoin. I mean, that's that's fine. I just don't think that's that's the long term arc that's going to play out this way. I think it's think if we just held everyone just held their dollars and didn't ever use them. That's that's not really economic activities. In fact, when people don't spend their money, when people don't, what is they what do they cry about? Oh, the GDP. There's no. You know, money the velocity is down. Money the, velocity, the, yeah. the money velocity is down. All this so stuff. The, so the, but, the, but again, you're conflating Bitcoin as cash or as a currency, and, and it's is not. It's not a currency. But it is a cryptocurrency. Oh, it's yeah. not a currency. Well, hold on, hold on. Let it's me not just a currency. Yes, bro. We, crypto ahead. is. Let me just say this one thing. Crypto is is money and currency together. We don't need to separate them anymore. Right. That's what the technology enables is that your money and your currency are now bound together. You I don't agree. Have to I, I agree. But 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 which one is you if you had a had if you had a scale, right, Alan, how percentage wise, how much of the market is actually using Bitcoin as a commodity and using Bitcoin as a currency? I, yeah, you know, 80, I, 20. 80% using it as a commodity, 20% I say, I say 90%, 90%. 90% as a commodity. As a commodity. Like what though? Yeah. What kind of commodity? Describe as it. As a gold, as, as like a gold, as a precious metal, as a digital precious metal. Yeah, yeah as an asset that... to be held on the balance sheets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean... That... Trek, chime in. Yeah, go ahead, man. It... Bro, this has always <laughs> been my issue with you for like how long, bro? <laughs> Because you always marginalize the people who are spending it as a currency and say, well, no, this is what the X amount of the, the people who have access, who have it, are doing. So we got to say it's this thing. I'm always at a loss on that argument because it's like, wait a minute, what happened to the technology that allows you to use it in various ways? Now, because the rich people are over here using it in a particular way. And what I don't like about what Mark Saylor, Elon, and all the rest of the big name folks is doing is the way that they're moving. And then if you listen to how they talk, no one's talking about like, and I get it, like this new wave coming in, don't care about privacy. They don't care about the OG principle stuff, but there's an expansion and a changing of the narrative of what, I'm, a, I'm a just keeping on Bitcoin, of what Bitcoin was, Yep. ideally supposed to work as and yep. it's crazy to watch this in real time and then i'm sitting in these different rooms and i'm talking with folks like y'all and alan you know what i'm talking about on on clubhouse and it's yep. just like yo like who hey bro the last <laughs> time i heard somebody talk about the white paper is it's crazy the left like and if you like look listen to even how the mainstream is doing it right now where no when they talk about Bitcoin, it's whole Bitcoin. It's never incremental, fractional Bitcoin. This is what annoys me about when people go with, hey, people are using it as a um, hedge against the dollar. They're using it as a store of value because it minimalizes and then um, just totally sideswipes the other ways that you can use it. Just because these rich people up here who are in a whole different operations yes, exactly an everyday person like me don't mean we supposed to be using it the same way and it frustrates mm -hmm. the hell out of me hey man to make these comparisons. king what's your what's your thoughts on that Yo, um, is, 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 is bitcoin a well we know it can be used for both we all know that that's that's you know common sense but what is it being used as right now by the majority of the people yeah, right now the majority is definitely just holding on to it. Um, but and I think we'll continue to see that. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that in the short term. I, uh, we're getting confused. Are we getting our years confused? You got to remember this is price <laughs> discovery of what could possibly okay. be okay. a go a global whether it's a global currency or a global store of value or both. It's a global thing. So while price discovery, this is why it's so volatile. It's not like this is. I don't think we're going to solve this. We're going to answer this in the short term. Uh, and it may be different to each person. Like I said, some billionaires might just want a story about you. Some people might want to use it. But regardless, I think we'll continue on this volatility until, what, maybe another 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? Until other countries and everybody really accepts it and submits it into 
um, a global currency or a global store of value, whatever it decides to be, I think we're still discovering that. I mean, it's people today who still don't know what Bitcoin is. So we can't even call it anything. A lot of people. Okay. A lot well, of people. See, here's the thing. I, I'm a contrarian, all right? Um, I think it's a reserved currency for an asset class, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's literally like being utilized against all these different other assets. And yeah, that's exactly that. Like people are trading against the Satoshi. I trade against the Satoshi. I trade against the dollar. Um, so yeah, that's the way it is. So everybody say don't spend it now. So when do you spend it? So this is my thing. You, you know, King Bless just said it. It's price discovery. We got to weigh all this feeds into the to the same narrative that Trek is talking about. Don't use it. I never right. said use it. I said sell. Some people use it. Some people aren't. I don't mean, I'm not saying that. But I am right. saying as far as what it is, like the price itself, because look, if it's worth a million dollars, then it's an investment, no matter how you look at it. But if it's not worth a million dollars, then, hey, you can spend it for some people. Right. But the, the, the point I'm making is that everyone is just like, when you talk about why don't you use it, why don't you spend it? for whatever it is within the Bitcoin network. Why don't you do that? Not now. So then my follow-up is, well, if not now, when? And I never get a real answer to that. So when I when I the way I look at crypto is that you gotta have some not everybody gotta spend it, right? Because not everybody spends their money in with, with dollars, right? But the a culture, uh, a community culture of spending and utilizing a coin right with for instance with ethereum eos you got to have eos ethereum cardano whatever as they build out you got to have that coin to do things within that network and that network is going to continue to deliver economic activity economic products capabilities services and the culture of spending within that is going to be very massive to build out a continued network effect and community growth so that sort of feeds upon itself. Just holding only is going to get you so far. I'll, so I just don't know how people get away with that. And, you know, like Trek said, Mark Cuban and, and Elon Musk and Sailor and all these guys, they don't have the same problems or considerations that the 98%, 99% of people have, right? Their problem is the devaluing dollar in a complete, like, um your wages are being stolen with your time and i know that affects those guys at the top but not in the same way so i don't think that when you sit on like these clubhouse forums and you got people talking about, i'll just hodl and just hold bitcoin and just wait dog like that's not gonna that's not how it's gonna play i just i can't i can't see it so i just this, not. this is where i agree and disagree with you so i can only i speak on me personally like I've lived off of Bitcoin for years now. I, you know, myself and my business partner, we've been living off Bitcoin, so we do spend it. However, uh, Will45, he made a great point. Why would you spend it when fiat is being printed uh, like crazy? That's the thing where people are using it as a hedge of the inflation and as a store of value. And that's why it's important. I mentioned price discovery, because right now, if you are spending Bitcoin, when the majority of the world doesn't know about it, and it's supposed to be either a global currency or a global store of value, regardless of how you look at it, it will go up in price because of scarcity. So that's just, I mean, that's just is what it is. As long as people believe in it, it has its own Bitcoin network effect, the Bitcoin, right. addiction, whatever that. So if that's the case, then if it's going to go up in value for me personally, I'm not, I have spent it. I do spend it, but I'm never, we used to give it away every day free on our show. We used to give it away, but it's like yeah. right now, as this is happening, it's just not in a rush to do it, especially as they continue. Like right now they're talking about giving every, what Biden said, you might give every, uh, family with a kid under six, $3,600 and everybody else $3,000 with kids over the age of six. Like I am not going to spend it right now because in, it, like to me, it's just plain and blue. It will go but, up in value. But what did you yeah. say? You said you spend it and you, like, I'm not saying spend all of it. All I'm saying is use it like anything else. You said you've been running your business for years, but you're doing what you're supposed to be doing i'm talking about everybody. i disagree with it too but see, see we did it because we're in like so put it like this if i had other means of income that were more than that i would never spend it i will or i won't say never i will wait because right now again I, I knew three or four years ago spending bitcoin when i needed to keep the lights on was a bad move but i still had to do it doesn't mean i wanted to but i i knew it was a bad move because i'm like three years ago less people knew about it so it's only eventual that the price discovery will continue to have. That's why I just keep mentioning price discovery. So I, I get what you're saying. Like in terms of dollars, for me, it's like, yeah, I spend some of my dollars. I save some of my dollars for a rainy day. I invest some of my dollars, right? I put them to work. 
So I get what you're saying with Bitcoin, but my thing is that since it's just so early in price discovery and so many people still don't know about it, I think you're putting yourself at a big risk from an economist point of view because you'd be losing money that you could essentially have had if you start spending it early. But I do agree with you. It's like if everyone's in their right mind, like, well, we we'll never will spend it. I mean, I don't. How does that work for the gold or silver market, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, Fast Nickel makes a good point here. He says, "Hodl if you, uh, I hodl, but if you hodl any coin, you must have an end game plan exactly. of when to spend it." Yeah, and that's that's mm -hmm. that's right, man. I mean, he's hit it right on the head. I mean, that's with any asset, though. That's with gold. That's with silver. You're going to yeah. have an end game of scaling out of that position at some point. Uh, maybe yeah. not all of it, but some of it. Um, if the money the isn't point. you're right the money isn't real until you spend it boy like, yeah, it's not realized it yeah it's, it's not if it's not real until you realize it for right. sure and I, and I think if you just force people to just accept this hotter narrative the more and more that bitcoin's network effect grows you actually potentially lose some people because they're like oh i held it when i should have sold it because they get upset you know or you know that everyone says instead of saying hey you, listen, you guys are traders, right? When you get into a good position, you let it run. And if you, you say you double your money, you might take out your entry, right? And move it into another asset, right? Let's just say you had, you know, 50,000 and it ran up to 150, right? You might take out your 50 to get your, 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 your the amount you enter with and take that 50 and buy another asset, right? But they'll tell you, just hold it forever. Like, that's just, to me, that's just disingenuous, right? Especially when all you can really do on Bitcoin is just hold. That's that's my other problem. There's really no nothing tied to the Bitcoin network directly that you can just put that park that money into. Whereas with other networks, you can potentially do that. That's, and that is where stable coins are coming in at. But one thing I will agree with you on um, essentially is that you're right. If I would say people don't spend Bitcoin um then the network effect we might see that decrease and things and that's the whole crazy thing with that fake crypto commercial that they had elon musk talking about he said wouldn't it be ironic if doge became the future of crypto that is how something crazy like that i think could happen even when technically and fundamentally it makes no sense when you're talking about 10 year olds or people every day i mean because see, all you on this panel know people ask you about cryptocurrency in regards to price before they ask you about the project more like nine times for sure for sure. so, absolutely. when it's things absolutely. like that i am with them is like if you don't keep big if you don't or if you aren't spending bitcoin using it and it is just old man's gold asset that might be a scary thing we could see where it's the opposite where it's like fine no one talks about it, no one spends it what about the new thing that everybody has at every point of sale device <laughs> or every store Far yeah, i'm not i'm not possible. yeah i'm not saying that a big dogecoin is is going to zero not at all i just think you're having yet another pump and dump cycle We've oh, I seen agree with so that. many in the past. Out, like that, I mean, it is what it is. We've seen it go up, spike up, and then go right back, reverse to the mean. And that mean will get gradually higher over time, I think. But uh, just be careful is what I'm saying. Let's get back to the Tesla thing, though. Uh, one thing I want to highlight in this article is about, you know, their positioning on, on why they're doing this. They said that we're investing an aggregate of $1.5 into Bitcoin under this policy and may acquire and hold digital assets from time to time or long term. Moreover, we expect to begin accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment for our products in the near future, subject to applicable laws and initially on a limited basis, which may, which we may or may not liquidate upon receipt. So, yeah, this is um, this is the new wave. I mean, it fits right in with the, the, the Tesla culture, right? Like cryptos, Tesla, Tesla, Apple. That whole mm -hmm. culture, I mean, I think this is really um, going to catapult Bitcoin over 100,000. This right here, Tesla by itself, will will do that. Hey, my Blood, opinion. Uh, I agree with you there. Um, I was talking with this gentleman um, who is an investor. He really cool guy. Um, he was talking to me about how he is in direct communication with Tim Cook. And uh, Tim Cook wants to implement uh, blockchain services with Apple Health. And uh, he was literally seeking his advice on how we should move in the space and whatnot. So like Apple is eyeing this asset class and they want to implement like services on top of like these networks. So it's I just want to make one I'll last point about Bitcoin and, and it being money or being currency or it being an asset. Or, uh, it, the reason why I would say it's 
more so an asset is because it is deflationary, right? So usually currencies are inflationary and it's supposed to be used as a means of exchange. You don't want to have a situation where a currency is a deflationary currency. That's why I always kind of cringe when I hear the gold people say, oh, yeah, we're going to we're going to back the dollar by gold one day, one to one. No, that, that's that's insane to do, because now you're slowing down the money supply, the flow of that money. You you want people to spend money, not hoard it. Right. Yeah. That, that, I think, that, yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Yeah. So I, the whole asset money thing, I, I've been saying for at least a year, I think Bitcoin is going to end up essentially functioning like an NFT, like a fungible NFT, as crazy as that sounds, in that because it won't be used as money, it'll just be something that you hold and be like, look at this Bitcoin that I got or something like that. I just, between now and the rest of our lives and between now and the rest of anybody who got kids' lives, Bitcoin is going to continue to inflate. Right. There's nothing. The people who will validate the 21 million Bitcoin meme, as I refer to it as, they're not even alive yet. Their parents aren't even alive yet. And we don't know what the social consensus is going to be at that time. So this fixation on deflationary and this promise, which we will never validate, will be fulfilled. The way I look at it, at it is anything that inflates now that you're comparing to Bitcoin is going to continue to inflate with Bitcoin unless you have a fixed token supply, which literally per the protocol rules is already issued and out there and there's not going to be any more. Wow. Right? What do you think about this statement here, fellas? The bond market needed a scapegoat. Bond market was a 40 year Ponzi scheme by the Fed. They need to have a place to unwind their positions without the public noticing. Crypto was an excuse for the bond market to go and die. Wow. That's pretty deep. Yeah, yeah, he's right because the yield is zero. There's no yield. Damn on near year. Yeah, zero. <laughs> it's near. It's near yeah. lower bound, I, for sure. I think for the most part, society as a whole is starting to wake up to uh, these new yield curves and these new oracle systems that are operating on top of these networks, and uh, literally, like they're, they've got to make their moves now. Otherwise, they're not going to be sitting pretty uh, by the turn of the next century. Yep. Yeah. One one other sleeper. I'm gonna do a little shill real quick. Shout out to all my uh YouTube members who caught that interview with uh Douglas Horn from Telos Tuesday. That coin was at four cents, it is now at 13 cents. And there you go. I mean uh, it, is, fundamentally fundamentally I don't know anything about okay. It. So Telos is another EOS IO blockchain, mm -hmm. but they're doing their gut. Look, look at this guy, look at this guy, look at this. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> so now the Laramer, so now the Laramer left. They all no, 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 no. Tell yeah. us been around. Tell, tell us has been around, bro. It, it's just doing this governance at the at the chain level. It, it, listen, you got to go check it out. I'm gonna send you the link to check out the interview, uh, Alan. You're going to learn a lot from, from what Telos is hey, doing. Hey, listen, bro. I look at everything, man. Yeah, I, I know. That's I what I'm going to send it to I you. I actually go and touch and use and, and try to do different stuff, man. Because Yeah, no, Telos is better than EOS, to be honest with you, because of the way you can onboard. It's almost like wax where you can you don't have that barrier of, uh, of entry like you do with EOS. You got to, you know, with mm -hmm. EOS, people they're like, I got to buy tokens to buy and create an account. So, you know, they eliminated that part. Uh, it's a lot of good things, but shout so, out to all those who did uh, get up on that Telos. It has got a low market cap. See, that's what I'm saying. When you're looking at tokens, look at the ones that have low market caps and a lot of traction as far as activity on the blockchain. That's what I look at as far as uh, my recipe for success. Mm -hmm. so, uh... I don't got nothing, well, bro. I, don't got, <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing on Telos, man. I don't know anything about it to 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 be critical about any of that. So, yeah, Same all good, here. all good, all good. So, uh, let's talk about uh, where do you guys want to go here? Uh, you want to talk about let's talk about the cryptocurrency? NFT? Yeah, let's do the NFT. Actually, part. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I got a, a topic after that. Go ahead. Oh yeah, go oh on. yeah. So let's let's talk about this NFT uh world oh yeah I, yeah that you, you're real excited about the nft world now uh mm -hmm. alan now i've been excited hold on okay a second, all right okay. hold up 
Hold up. I've been excited about NFTs. I just wasn't excited about wax. That's the difference. Okay. You still don't like wax? I haven't used it yet, so I have no opinion, but it's tied to EOS and all that, so I haven't got used to it yet. Okay. (laughs) But Craig, Craig, chime in on this one, man. Like I said earlier today, bro, Ken was helping me out with the wax situation because of what I'm doing with the ebook. And yep. it's a little bit of a process. Um, and I haven't like so I've gotten, let's say, past my first part as far as being able to mint, and now I understand how to do the um drops. Mm-hmm. So I'm not fully, fully in yet, but I'm getting there. Um it's a it's a process, but what always scared, well, not always, but with the price of Ethereum doing what it's doing right now, like the gas fees is just hey, sky high. It's a problem, bro. It's a problem. So look, that turned me. Like honestly, this is what's gonna happen with the all the NFT stuff. All this stuff is essentially gonna move to L twos and side chains. So when I say L twos, I mean like Loopring or ZK Sync. Um, optimism and side chains. I mean, like Matic and X die. It's already happening. Matic like is C. Matic is dope. Matic is Open real C, dope. Open C is actually opening. Uh, they have a Matic version now. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know that. They but did, huh? yeah, NFTs are about to be. I mean, they're already kicking off with a bang this year. But they are going to be the big narrative of 2021. I'm telling you right now, is they're going yeah. to be massive. There are a lot of projects that are coming. It's a completely different mechanism as far as like how you speculate on it. It's not like regular coins, which is why you don't have a lot of like your traditional sh- shillers because it's not as you can only shill one one token. <laughs> it's well, unique. It's not, you you more so. No, I mean, you can shill an artist. Yeah. No, nah, nah. Look at Axie Yo. Infinity, right? Something like that. Yo, bro. Um, so. For how I'm looking at it, and I got to say, jumping in on one of the, I don't remember which one of the rooms it was, but, like, they was going off for, like, three hours on NFT stuff. And it was a couple of things that I was not aware of. And I'm talking about Clubhouse, if you ain't know. Uh, but even before that, just in watching some of the other things, um, some people was talking about, like, Crypto Finally, like Ken, uh, some of the things that you said, um, also, Alan, even you, 10 Pound. Um, my dude, um, 3D, um, Douglas, um, I'm looking at this next, like, let's say two, two and a half years. We got, I think we're going to see the ICO on like, on crack, bro. It's yeah. going to be the yeah. ICO era on crack. The next two, two and a half, maybe three years is going to be crazy. <laughs> Hey, like it's people doing stuff bro like who people doing albums they're doing like actual singles i know one person who is a comedian who's making his one liner jokes into nfts yeah Look, sorry. just uh, two, that hours ago, right now. two hours ago um a piece of land in axie infinity which is a collectibles world sold for 1.5 million dollars okay um we had we got crypto punks. If you haven't heard of those, those are the first NFTs. Okay, those routinely sell anywhere from fifty to a hundred. We had one sell like last month for like seven hundred and fifty thousand. We had a hash mask, which is a new project. Which full disclosure, I'm uh, a moderator on that project. But oh, look at you being being uh, being a. Oh, hey, look man. at you. Hey, look, look at I'm you always, being a responsible. Yeah, I'm always comfortable. So look. What I'm saying is, after the the everything was revealed, somebody paid 420 ETH, which was like 660 thousand for one of the rarest hash mans. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, this NFT space is going to blow up. It already has, but this is like nothing because the difference between like coin utility speculation and all that is that NFTs deliver the product to you immediately, so you get the experience. You get the tangibility immediately. You get emotional connection to it. So the ability to dump it is not as easy and thus is a more illiquid market. But at the same time, you tend to hold it longer. So right. I'm just telling you, like, these NFTs are going to take all shit, collectibles, art, music, video, games, all this stuff. 
there's going to be a lot of speculation in that space and you better start getting aware of how to take advantage of that. Even if yeah. you want to talk about Bitcoin as an asset, a painting, a collectible, whatever. I listen, I got a I got crypto, I got crypto punks. To me, that's an asset. I got some assets. It is. It's an asset, it is. Right? I got it is. an artist it's that it, I it's a unique asset, asset though. But but go but Bitcoin is a is a fungible asset. Yeah, it's a fungible, it's a fungible NFT. That's what I said. That's what it's gonna end up being. Yeah. Hey, so hear me out, right? I did an auction and also I did a live show as a musician inside of the metaverse on crypto voxels. To nice. promote my auction. Yeah, man. And uh, the person that won my auction kind of didn't want to pay the gas fees to redeem the <laughs> NFT because the gas fees were so insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bro, I put a lot of effort into that piece of work and I was willing to ship physical product too, like posters, a mouse pad, some stickers, t shirts, yeah. long sleeve shirts, hoodies, and all that, bro. Like, I was ready to go. And you know what? It's going to be so to, to that point, Alan, we're a year and a half, two years away from e, uh, from Ethereum 2.0 fully. Being... We don't need that. We don't need oh, that. Okay. Look, okay is, so Matic is on OPC is on Matic. Right I, now. I understand that. So do you think that's going to be you think that's going to really be able to bridge that gap until Ethereum 2.0? Oh, is fully... for sure. I do. I do. Because this is the problem right now that's going on right now. You're onboarded to Ethereum, right? So then you got to go from Ethereum to an L2 or a side chain, right? But eventually, what's in it, not even eventually, it's already starting to happen. They're just going to take you straight to Matic. They're going to take you straight to XDAI. So they're going to take the steps out of the way to to abstract away having to do all that. And then- Or just go, or, or people are just going to go straight to WAX. Hey, they might go to WAX. You're right. Or any, to, or any other. Right. Or any yeah, other. or any other network, Cardano. Any listen, other. Cardano. I'm not maximalist at all. I listen. Right. I, I like Cardano. I like Polkadot. I like Cosmos. I like see. I like a lot of different projects that you can build on. I, I'm a builder. So does Cardano have any apps? Yeah, not yet. But they're gonna come. Don't what the worry. hell do you Wait. like Card? That's, oh, that's what I think oh, people Alan. Let me don't, tell you. Something. Don't don't short sell it. Don't short. Do not. I'm short actually sell it. with you. Bro, they got smart contracts. They yeah. play ground Boom. for smart contracts. Yes, they already do. on Cardano, man. Yes, like, Marlo. Dude, man, who Marlo? are you talking Marlo. about? Marlo, ten pound. Are you talking Marlo about Marlo down the street? Man, I'm talking about what they have right now with the IO, uh, IO, H I O H K. Yeah, I O H K. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Shame on y'all. We have to stay king. We have to remember something in this space. Somebody got to die. Everybody can't live. Right? <laughs> Somebody has to die. And you think it's going to be Cardano? I'm not saying it will be, but I and, and just to be you know full disclosure, I trade Cardano. I've been in out of polka dot. Uh, was it uh, a unicorn? What's the unicorn thing? Uh, for the DeFi network, um, Uniswap. Wi -Fi. Yeah, uh, yeah all this. so I'm trading all this stuff. But as far as longevity, to me, it's super speculative because. Are they going to beat out Ethereum in the short term? Is that what you're telling me? With all the resources that Ethereum has? Are why you, hold on, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Why do you, why, and when I say you, it's not even attacked on you, King. No, I know what you mean by it. This is a mentality that people have. They focus on beating, right? We talk about a pie that's about to go from like this size to like massive, right? Yeah. And this whole mentality of beating zero sum sort of outcomes are is very ridiculous to me. Right, like we got to start thinking like this pie is going to go 100x, okay? Mm -hmm. So Ethereum is going to play its finest place, and it, you know when Cardano does some, it's going to find its niche. Polkadot, whatever, um, near. I don't even have some of these coins. My whole point is, this place is this space is going to completely blow up. We need to I stop mean. worrying about this pie. Like somebody got to eat all of it. You just need to I, I, my my thing is, and I see what Better Days is saying. Statements like this. Shout out to Better Days. He's a he's a subscriber of mine. Ada, Ada is the best thing in the. Sp you can't make these types of see, statements. I know I'm you're not. not. I, I know you're not. But I see people sit, doing this with Ada all the time. Because, let me, well, hold on. Have you ever watched Hoskinson? Have you ever watched him talk? I, I met him. I met him out when I went to the I know you met him at some conference, yeah, but have yeah. you watched his videos? I, I met him and watched him. At, yeah, speak. Yes. I, no, what I'm saying is, if you've been watching Hoskinson for the last, like, nine months, he is <clears> on, <throat> he just got a regular YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. He gets on there and he talks about 
what they're building, the tools, the 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 phases, everything. They are building. Now, when I say building is they're building infrastructure, they're building tools, they have grant programs for people to come on there. They have a bridge to convert any ERC20 into a native token on their network. Smart right. contracts are coming. My, I'm not trying to shield Cardano so much. No, I'm I'm but I'm, I'm just saying like you things are happening. So don't think that they, like people aren't going to go there and build because it's going to be cheaper than using Ethereum. So the race is really can Polkadot, Cosmos, uh, Cardano, near these other networks get a network effect a, of uh, builders to come there before Ethereum can sit there and get L2s off and lower their gas fees as people transition there. That's the real race right now. So let me answer that. Um, so. I don't think it's a zero sum game to be fair. Like, uh, I don't think it's either this okay. wins or that loses. However, majority of the people, especially right now and 2017, the two times where we had the most interest into cryptocurrency are here for money. Point blank. Yes. Yeah. They, don't care about, they do not care about the fundamentals. Of, I mean, this is what we do on the show. Like we, this is where we start our show. We wanted to talk about these news articles to say that, Hey, this is fun. These are the real fundamentals. Like, you should actually read the white paper, which how many people right now in this space have never even read the Bitcoin white paper? It's people in your yep. comment section, I bet, talking about Dogecoin, Cardano, and everything else that's never read the white paper. So yeah. that distinction needs to be made clear because when you are making that distinction, you're talking about investors, which is most of these people are. They're coming in as investors. Spec not spec no, no, no. Yeah. Speculators, King. Really? Yes. Not even investors. Speculators. So when you're coming into a market for that reason and for that, then the things you just said, by and large, while they should matter, they matter to people like me, they don't matter to the masses. Because if they matter to the masses, then Cardano would be over, they'd be killing Dogecoin right now, right? I, again, I agree with you. I get what you're saying, but that it doesn't matter. I get what you're saying, but right now, perception is king. Perception matters. And the perception is that Doge has his network effect. The perception is that Bcash is dead. The perception is that Ethereum is the number two coin. They're going to have all these great things going. So why that may be false, and I agree, it doesn't need to be a zero-sum game for some win or some lose. When you're talking about a pot of money or people's pot of money, there sometimes isn't enough money, especially in the initial stages, I think, to go around in every direction. Um, but let me, that's my that thought. Let, me, let me counter that real quick. I look at things in a longer time horizon. You look at a coin like Litecoin, who has been around has really I, listen you can mimble wimble me for the next three years you're still gonna be <laughs> okay my whole point is that these shifts of coins that come into like the top 20 and come out are going to continue to evolve and they're just slower there is no reason that litecoin should be where it's at it does nothing better than bitcoin okay shoot it does nothing better than dogecoin mimble wimble ain't de isn't deployed so why is it there right so the chains that are going to start taking over are going to be chains and coins are going to be chains you can build on. That's why Ethereum is, because it was the first coin that you can build on. Binance, Chainlink, glues all that together. Cardano is there because you can build on it. And you need to build, you need, the, you need that. Polkadot, same thing, right? That's why. And then the DeFi tokens. Aave is going to be in the top 10, whether people like it or not. Like, it's just going to happen. It's the best DeFi protocol. That's just, that's just what it is right now. So because people use it, it all this stuff is tied to use. People don't use Litecoin. Look at crypto info or crypto fees info or something like that. Nobody's using Litecoin. Why is it there? Who knows? And people are using Litecoin, bro. Stop short selling. This man, Dude, Litecoin got a devout Litecoin army. I don't, I'm not short selling nothing. And people oh, love Litecoin. Out. But what I will say is I do agree with Alan in the sense of that is, he is right. That is a narrative of the space where it's like, hey, somebody got to die. Somebody got to live. And again, I disagree with that from an enthusiast, you know, a person who's actually in a space who likes the technology, who likes to see what's happening. I do disagree with that. But from an investor and knowing what people are coming to the market for, I, I agree with it because, I mean, you got to remember, you're talking about retail investors now is where we're going toward and we're trying to make sure retail investors are getting the market. A lot of these people, you say $50 a week, they're going to look at you like, you want me to spend two hundred dollars a month on big on crypto? What? I don't have that. I have kids. Like, what are you talking about? So when they're making these decisions, this is when these conversations do matter, and you do have to say this one might die, and this one has the more probability of living. Whether that's the right way you're looking at it or not, it's like, hey, if a person only has X amount of dollars and they're trying to be a part of this community, how? And again, I'm with you. Doesn't they don't need to invest to be a part of the community? But the way a lot of them are looking at it, they're just like, hey, I'm just trying to spend my money on something. 
Right. So I agree. have to be responsible and say, I don't think this will work. This is the reason why. Or I think this can work for this amount of time. This is the reason why. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other the reason you got a lot of these communities like Cardano, especially unit bias is a thing, right? People want to own a whole of something. So the same thing that we saw with XRP, same thing that we see with those. Just like, hey, man, if I get like a thousand of these Doge coins or these XRPs, if it goes to like a hundred dollars, like I'm going to be rich. So that's how they think about it. So unit bias is a thing. People don't want to own like like fractions of a of whatever right and right. bitcoin is like man i gotta get for you just talking about what two hundred dollars a month or something like but you're right they should like, reverse right i'm agreeing with you i agree with you i already know it i'm with you but they don't yeah. they don't do it i don't know yeah. they don't do it yeah they don't do it they want to own a whole or something it's yeah. just the way it's a psychological thing we'll never get by i actually think bitcoin community or however i feel like they quickly need to shift to like measuring in sats or something pretty soon because I mean, imagine a two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Listen, I, I don't necessarily like it, but I can admit I think Bitcoin is going to get to two hundred thousand because I'm what I'm interested in what everything else is going to be when Bitcoin is two hundred thousand. And like, that's a number. Say two hundred thousand. Like, you need to you need to shift to a different unit. It's going to be a problem. It's going to get. It's a psychological. Yeah, issue. they got. You know, it was years ago we talked about shifting shifting to micro uh, sats and nano sats. So that'll, that'll happen. That'll happen. That'll happen. He's right. It, it needs to, sats need to happen ASAP. I mean, we have people come on the show today. Like, sat, sats are too, 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 too many, low. too low. Yeah. No, man, that's the high. lowest. High, man. That's the lowest. You want to go, you want to go, Mac, no, you want to go, many. Many. No. what are we calling it? Finny? Many, many, yeah, many. Oh, so, man. For a minute. The play first is off, they're called, first off, they're called M bits. M bits, yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Weren't we calling it Finney's for short for a moment, too? We were calling it Finney's. Uh, no, Finney's, yeah. Finney's, that's that Finney's are uh, for Gway. Uh, like that's like uh, yeah. hundred thousand Gway, right? That's yeah, he's right. Is. Right, ten yeah. pounds. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but, I'm a nerd in that uh, regard. Like I was gonna, like, agree, I, was gonna I was gonna agree. I was gonna agree. Now, now we have people come on today saying Bitcoin is cost too much. I can't buy Bitcoin. It's like, yeah, you still have to tell people this that they can buy Satoshi. So yeah, I'm with them. Like that that effect, that psychological effect of seeing forty seven thousand. Oh, uh, 1700, 1600 to 40 cent, 30 cent to six cent, to five cent. Oh, to three cent. Oh, we getting this like that is crazy right now. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. penny stocks, right? It's, it's the same, same sort of play. You got to. And I think the Bitcoin community. Listen, I don't know how that works or who governs that sort of mindset around that. Like who can say start using sats or not. I think if, if there's social consensus of a lot of Bitcoiners shifts to using sats, but it's going to be a problem. We saw it in 2017, right? And it's going to continue to be a problem. The only difference is the institutions are buying a lot of this stuff. They, they don't care about sats, but your average person is going to, they can't, they don't, nobody wants, people already hate fractions and decimals, 0. 0.00890, whatever. Ooh, that's not going to work. Start, how much is one sat right now? Like, uh, how much is one dollar in sets? Like, what is that conversion? Does anyone know? Well, at a million dollars, Bitcoin would be one dollar Satoshi. I think thirty dollars right now gives you like sixty thousand sets or something. You just gotta I, listen. I don't know how it's gotta happen. I think for the Bitcoin community, if they really want to think these long, people don't they care. Don't to... These are okay. all these all right. are all right. speculators. Right. They listen right. to Elon Musk. They're right. listening to Snoop Dogg. Right. They just want to buy, and they're gonna buy at the top and get their nuts capped. I'm gonna be rich in two days. That's what they tell me. <laughs> Yo, 48 hours you watch. <laughs> I said this like years ago. Um, in like 2018, it was like 2017. You got, and I'm looking at the first decade. In the first decade, I, I summed it up to you had two types of people in this space, in the community. You had the people who lived in the space, and then you had the people who lived off the space. King, um, Bitcoin Zay. YouTube, blood, tampon, like y'all are in the space people. I'm an in the space person. Alan is an in the space person. And then you got the folks who are looking at it going, oh, how do I get the bag? They don't care about the tech. They don't care about privacy. They don't care about the Which is 90% of them. This but is 90% of yo, them. This new wave, it, it's, it's, it's weird, bro. Like, I feel like it's a new group coming in with a different kind of mentality. And the other part that gets me is they don't want to deal with none of the risk, none of the responsibility. I be listening to people, bro. And I'm like, yo, this is like, 
delegated responsibility. Like you don't want to do none of it. You just want to get the gimme, gimme, gimme. And that's, it might be just me because of how long I've been in this and I'm seeing the different changes and the shifts, but it's just, it, it's frustrating to a degree, but I get it. Like this is just a part of the growing pains and what we have to go through to get it to where, as you talk about Alan, like in this whole thing of like, how are we getting it adopted? How are we getting into, into where it's built out more than just it's a, um, the blockchain that has a, a money use or a store value use, like what other things are we doing with it and bringing it out? But like the most blockstream killed that for Bitcoin. Yep. Like <laughs> hey. Uh oh, shots fired. Black Shot blockstream fire. killed hey, that for Bitcoin, bro. Unfortunately. Yep. Bro, yo, I want to jump onto a comment that um Bit Native said, he, and it was off of the um. I thought that that I um. Shout out to you, bro. I ain't see. I ain't speak to you in a minute, but um, he was saying the thing about like IBM and Amazon and all of them getting in. Here's the thing that yes, that sounds good as far as like oh, big tech companies are doing adoption, but you gotta and you know, bro, because you a tech dude. Even though the big tech companies move in the space, they don't have the agility to move the same way that like you know these new startups are moving, these new um projects or. Even on the end of um, um, on on Bitcoin itself, like it's not a matter of like, oh, we got um patents and we got garden walls going up, and you can only do something when we say so. That's what's going on with your Amazon. That's what's going on with your IBM. That's what's going on with your Microsoft and Google and the rest of them. So like, it sounds good, and it's like, oh, now the people who don't know anything techie, but they know the big Google company is a part of it now. So now the average, you know, whoever person knows, oh, this is a thing because a recognized name is in it now. It doesn't mean they're going to enjoy what the feature of the product is that they push out. And then what happened? They're going to come back to the stuff that's over here on the open source side. In my opinion. All right. Yeah, I hear you, man. Alan, you had something you wanted to touch on as a topic. Uh, what was that? No, nah, we had touched on it. It was uh, it was the NFTs. I just was trying to let you guys know that the NFTs are going to be like the entry point for how a lot of real world stuff. And when I say I mean real and tangible things, right? So like music is intangible, art is in, art is tangible. But what I mean is that like ways of expressiveness and games and just other things that are non just like coin and utility related. This stuff is really, really about to pick up. Um, All this right, so I, I agree. So how does the, how does the, you know, we got cats out here watching um, that's kind of fairly new to the crypto scene. And now we're, you know, they're just getting their head, heads around Bitcoin and altcoins. And now you didn't brought up NFTs. What the hell? <laughs> how are they supposed to um, benefit from this new wave which i agree with you but how how should people go about getting to that space because it's, it's a slightly different mindset right, right a first thing i would do is honestly if you've got an iphone right now clubhouse is just a good place to go oh, here this guy go oh, hold on a second man. it, it is on. though it you explains the question. i'm answering the question oh, go on clubhouse go. just listen to people right i tell people anything with crypto whatever don't put in money first, put in time, right? Put in time. You got time to sit around on Facebook or whatever else you do. Get on there and listen. YouTube is your friend. Search this stuff, understand it, right? Yeah, there are shillers that are shilling like some NFTs and projects and things like that. Get on there, go on platform. You can do a whole lot before you have to put it with your time, before you have to put a dime into anything in crypto, NFTs, tokens, whatever. So do that. And when you go through that, that's when you'll be ready to get on platforms like OpenSea or Rarible or Super Rare or even Wax or whatever. Like, you got to put in the time. It's like isn't it, it's like anything else, right? Just put in the yeah. time. But Clubhouse is a great source of info right now. Like, it okay. really is. All right, right cool. Man. So, so Trek, um, what's your thoughts about the NFT space? Um, is it is it the next ICO boom type situation? What what is it to you? Uh, and I got a question after him about it as well. When you get finished, for sure, it's going to go ham in the next three years. 
it's going to be 27, 2016, 2017, all over again. And on what Alan said. But how do you navigate this this go around? Because again, NFTs are non-fungible. So each each NFT is unique. It's not right. like I can just go blindly and just say, oh, I'm just going to buy Litecoin or Dogecoin and just hodl it and then sell it to another person in a year when it's, you know, 100x. So I'm going I'm to piggyback on what Alan said. Yeah, jump into, you know, um, the, the clubhouse thing. If you got the phone, don't go out and buy a whole goddamn new phone. Like, don't do that. That's just, yeah. in, my opinion, that's stupid. in my opinion, that's yeah. stupid. Yeah. There's other ways of learning about this thing. Google University is your friend. You know what I'm saying? Um, YouTube um, college is free all day. Like, what what gets me in regards to this thing, and I'm going to say it, like, it's a process. It, and not on the end of if you're looking to create stuff. I'm just talking about understanding what are the platforms that are out there right now and who are these, like, official companies like tops and like Atari and like um the and then the NBA top shots and like who they're connecting with because this is what's going on right now. I'm gonna throw this out, but I'm not telling you to go out and go do this. Like you already got folks working out how to do NFT yield farming. Like, oh that's yeah, that's already happening, happening now. That's yeah, it is. it's happening now. So yeah, NFT.io. You, you. Yeah, you, that's. I, I'm not giving out no, like, but you can look, find stuff out. Is my point. It's like Alan said. Either you're gonna put in the time, and I'll caveat and say you're gonna either put in the money. What I what I kind of see going on right now is a lot of people just want the pre-packaged thing to get the gain, but they don't want to do X amount of the work for it. And if it's not a convenient way of understanding it or or or, or being able to do it. They just, uh, I'm going to well, just go to the next let me, thing. let me say one thing to that, though. NFTs are actually easier to understand. And here's an example. NFTs, let's just say a set of collectibles, or it, we'll put art to the side, because I've got some art, too. But let's take a set of collectibles. Let's take, like, like uh, you look at, like, CryptoPunks, these hash masks that just came out, Axie Infinity. These are, like, the popular Joy Worlds, um, Avastars. You got like a certain number, right? And the same thing about all of these is like these certain number, it's always a fixed amount or this amount, like a coin comes out. They got these set of traits. Some have this trait is more rare. This one's less rare, whatever, right? So really immediately you get that it's really some sort of like a game, like a collective okay. game. So think oh, about Beanie like, Baby. Uh, baseball cards, right? So uh, let's just do basketball cards. There weren't as many Jordans in in a set as there were. Right. Uh, 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 I can't even Mark e Elo or whatever cards. Right. There was always not as many Jordan cards because he was. They were rarer. It's the same thing. So NFTs with collectibles are just you're trying to get the rarest thing. That's not hard, and it's usually okay. tied to the game or traits and things like that. Got that then. As far as on the consumer, the person who wants to get one of these things side, that is definitely a lot more easier to do and understand compared to like just tokens and coins itself. But on yep. the creator side, the creator side, bro, tell me it's not a process. And you, oh yeah, and on the creator side, there's more work. But when I'm not, listen, the people listening to this are more the retail end user, right? So what I'm trying to tell them is like, this is really not that hard. It's actually much easier. I'll put it like this. It's much easier to understand what uh, Axie Infinity is, or Crypto Punk, or Crypto Kitties is, then understanding what the hell Ave does. You see what I'm saying? Or even like you, like yeah. oh, okay, so you know, I see this now. Real quick to answer your question, in Crypto Blood, about how they get liquidity, right? Because you're mm -hmm. wondering how do they like trade out of this, mm -hmm. right? If they want, if it's an investment, because let's just be mm -hmm. about it. You, there's a project out there, and this is gonna. There's gonna be more of these, but it's it's about two months old. It's on Ethereum. It's called NFTX. So what they did is they took like the the blue chip NFT projects, and they created like an index fund, right? And then there's a bunch of these different um, NFT tokens inside this fund. Now what happens is, piece of that fund you can essentially buy and sell on the market, right? But if you have a piece of 
let's just say there's 10 pieces of something in a in a in one of these funds, right? Well, it can only fit 10, but if you have another 10, you can put in if you have one of those types on the outside and you put it in, you get another one out, or you can trade it for a token. So I know I didn't explain it well, but what I'm saying is almost making it fungible. It's, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So NFT X, an NFT index fund makes it liquid in a yeah. way, mm -hmm. right? It's that. So you're going to see that really blow up. Okay. Okay. Um, to offer that. Uh, now, uh, Lenny, 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 so Kravitz, Lenny, Lenny Kravitz, you got anything over here you want to <laughs> add? In? Well, hear me out, right? There's multiple layers to this, right? It depends on how like technical you want to get, but there's a way to make a fungible layer inside of non-fungible tokens. Mm. And uh, it, it comes down to like fully understanding the space. But for the most part, creators, all they have to do if they really want to get started is just go to OpenSea and do a gasless deployment. Like or literally just upload, their, upload their audio or upload their visuals into OpenSea and just, you know, have at it. Like it's literally not that complicated on the surface if you don't want to care about the complications of other people buying your token after you've deployed it, right? Mm -hmm. So it just ultimately depends on what's right for the creator. So I want to get I want to get to King's question real quick. Yeah, a, a couple now actually. So I'm not deep into NFTs for me. Like when they started popping up, and even as they are now, I do see a future in them. Um, you know, I think everything with a digital future has a future for the most part. But it's mm -hmm. just nothing I'm interested in getting because I have so many projects. But with that being said, one thing I would be interested in knowing the NFTs and how how it related to the regular market, which caught me by surprise. Uh, I remember at the end of 2017 when the ICO boom went crazy, the price went crazy. One thing I kept screening people from being in the military and know how they work. And I was like, wait until after Martin Luther King Day when these regulators come back and see what happens. So that's mm -hmm. my question with NFTs. Martin Luther we, King! They haven't had that attention yet of regulators. So my question is like, what will first market are they displacing if any like what traditional things are they displacing we know that bitcoin and like are displacing banks and you see the fud that comes from that so my thing is like okay what are nfts replacing displacing and then also what of any entry points do regulators have on it because i think when we look at this entire market we always forget about regulators and whoever that these projects are displacing and yeah. i think we saw in the crypto market i mean we saw in the last two years when a fake bear market that the price can be suppressed uh, by institutions and other people if it's yeah. allowed and isn't that possible. So, so NFTs aren't aren't disrupting or replacing any. It's it's an added layer, digital yeah. layer to exactly. real physical. Well, it can be digital uh, things as well, but physical things as well, tangible things. So it's just that additional additional layer to allow people to trade those assets, those things that represent those assets. So yeah. you're saying it was never any way to trade some of the artwork before they put it digitally. Now we can trade it so it's not displacing any market. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much a certificate. It's just creating a certificate of authenticity. Pretty much. Yeah. There you go. That's a good, that's me, a good way of putting it. Let me give you know, how, how do regulators and government get paid off it? See, that's, and that's what you I was going to ask next. Where I'm going. That's where I was going to ask. I, I, I don't have an answer to that. I'm the not taking off. Look, so if, if an artist make a painting and they go to a, a fair or anywhere and they sell it, right? Um, there's no regulator involved, right? Um, now they have to pay their taxes just like any other independent artist or independent, you know, um, self-employed person. There's no different. What's the difference? I mean, See, I, agree. I, hey, so hey, that, I, I'm the, I agree I'm with you. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm always looking for the feds, but that's why they somewhere say. around. Listen, okay. when I started, when I got going in crypto, it was still a fraud. It was still fake. No one cared. People hanging up the phone. Next thing you know, hey, you know you owe capital gains tax. No, I don't. What are you talking about? I this no, so I, I get the tax part of it. Like like Alan said, that's understandable. Like that's just a transaction. It's going to be capital gains or whatever. That's fine. But my question, Alan, is what does regulatory, what does a regulatory environment look like for NFTs? Because if it takes over how an ICO market does, like you all say, hey, this is going to be bigger than the ICO market, or is they're it coming in, they're going to come get their money. They're coming, okay, yeah, they're well, coming in. What market looks like? What, okay. what? What is? What? Is, where is all the regulators for for an art place? Right? Like if 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 someone sits at home, makes a bunch of paintings, and goes some to some fair 
or you know it's not a multi-billion dollar project though you don't have a multi-billion dollar industry around it when you do that i mean i'm again to me it's a taxes question not a regulatory question. i hear you okay maybe that's how how i look at it it. taxes huh not not really trek those are two separate things here here's why i'm gonna say it is because because of how this technology is working right now, right? And then we could argue, uh, well, not argue, but we could ex- go into about how the marketplaces work, right? It's, it's literally just me going on the website, looking what you got. Oh, all right, boom, I'm going to connect my wallet in, buy it, boom, you get your thing. I go about, like, the marketplaces so far work like decentralized exchanges. Um. And now we're talking about when the money really starts going in and like, yeah, you know, we made the 80 million or whatever on the Ethereum thing. But when you start adding the other blockchains and then people start putting in real world assets into what we're going to tokenize as a thing on top of this new medium of, 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 of content, like now we're talking money and they got to figure out how do I, how do we get the money for the government? So you're talking to city coffers like what New York City did. You're talking to state coffers. Then you're talking about the federal coffers. Everybody's going to want they cut. And then somebody's going to be like, oh, well, we're this department, just like what they do now between SEEK, FINRA, um, IRS, and the other um, yeah. alpha. Like I, everybody's going to want with you, but this is taxes, man. I don't know how a regulator is going to come tell an artist who's – most of these artists, here's an example. I interview on my podcast uh, a young lady from South Africa. You, I got a question. Let me just really interject. Do you think they're going to have a, uh, a KYC? That's what I'm typing right now. Money laundering, baby. Yeah, yeah KYC right. type of situation. You no. got to be a qualified NFT no. investor. No, you know, they're going to no. make some shit Somebody going to do it. So Nifty Gateway gonna do it maybe for for those set of artists, but it's not okay. gonna be a requirement. Come on, man. No, okay. really? Okay. Real? Wait, wait. No. It's not gonna be a requirement. Like all of a sudden, how you can literally get crypto for yourself, and then what do they do? They tapped it on the centralized companies. All of a sudden, now, like you got people thinking KYC is a natural part of crypto, bro. Which is no. crazy. Like, Which is crazy. You Which got some crazy. people thinking that. Not no, everybody. most of the industry. No, that's the that's, that's, that main, right that's, that's most, most industry of the now, Alan. Is, bro. Yeah. So my question is, yeah, because they got to regulate it. Because think about it, fellas. There, you can. I can see NFTs being a backdoor way into cryptos from a non-KYC perspective. And that's and that yeah. was my, and that's what, my actual yeah. to kind of go about it because again I agree with Alan what he's saying as far as I, I'm an NFT fan as far as the, anything putting on a digital space. My only question with some things will be onboarding, especially when they're talking about supply chains. But other than that, I'm all about digital, so I'm with you. But again, I had to reel myself in after 2017, 2018 to be like, it doesn't matter how good the technology is, it doesn't matter how good the market is, the community, none of these things. If even if they don't have a case for it, they're trying to make a case. And I think something like that, what he said, that, what if that is the back door into crypto where, hey, I can buy some art or whatever, don't have to do this KYC AML, and I can pay with cash or in Bitcoin or whatever, or whatever crypto I want. And now I'm in the market, and I can just trade that out, sell that out, and I'm in the market fully. Um, again, far-fetched, these are things we don't have to think about. I just think these are things we should think about when we're talking about markets uh eclipsing what we saw in the ICO market. I mean, literally the only the, the regulators didn't come from the ICO market until about June or July, August. That's when you first heard a regulator yeah. talking about the ICO market. And that yeah. was like after some of those things came out, it was like, oh, 200 million dollars here, 50 million here. They came out the woodwork. I, I literally didn't see it happening when they did it, to be honest, for myself. No, you hey, you guys you got you asking the right question, man. But I just think with NFTs it's gonna be hard for an artist to be like, hey man, I created this. I could have just put put this out on on a on YouTube, and now I got to do all this. Like, come on, man. Like, that's true. So, uh, okay. off, off topic, real quick. Mm-hmm. Ten pound, can you play some Stanley Clark School Days? Maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. Dang. My apologies. I never even heard that song. Not Dang, no skills, man. You can't just come man. up with a riff off the top, freestyle that yeah. boy. I, no, I, I don't even, I've never even heard that song before in my life. But yo, to, to actually <laughs> try, like, try uh, to play it, take it back. But try to play it. Try to play it. Go ahead. Tell us what you think it sounds like. What does it sound like to you? 
Play us out, Dave. All right. Somebody I'm back in school. school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm back in school. school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo. <laughs> yo, but no, seriously though. Wait, <laughs> hear me out. All right, hear me out. Um, as for like uh, money laundering through uh, NFTs, right? I think that's a serious subject to be had, uh, especially uh, through like what Flow Protocol is doing with this whole NBA Top Shot stuff, you know. Yeah, like, you got all these speculators like, you know, just bidding up these moments, these iconic moments in sports history. And it's insane, right? It's like, what's the real motive behind it? Like, oh, what do you mean? It's a collectible. Listen, yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I get that. It is dumb, but it's a collectible. It is a collectible oh, okay. for sure. But people aren't just using blockchain for this. They're also tapping into it with their credit card, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so yeah. Yeah, bro. No, that that's a way of that's a way of money. That's a way of getting into the crypto space without KYC. So they're going to come in. Mm-hmm. I'm telling, they are going to come in. Let Y'all this bad boy. Thing. Let a couple more people make a couple million. They will be not. They will be here quickly. Don't worry. You're rich, Trek. Huh? You're rich until today. Right, huh? right. <laughs> right. Trek. I'll let it. All what right. You got to say, man. So with what you said about the money laundering part, I can see that, but I can also see it. All right, so. Think about how um, China has their thing about capital flight um, and uh, like X amount of the, um, uh, the African countries have things about capital flight, too. So with the end of, and this is another reason why I would see some some jurisdiction is going to be the first one to do the shoulder tap gang gang. Um, and it's going to be that, oh, we got to do something. It's either going to be a porn argument, um, illicit crime argument. Or capital um, flight argument. One of those three things is going to be the ju- is the, is going to be the gateway to be like, oh, we need to do some kind of regulation. How are they going to actually like um, choke or throttle the 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 actual market platforms? I don't know that part, but considering that they are actually companies and they are actually in a place, somebody going to get tapped at some point, and it's going to be like, oh. You need to stop that person from creating. Oh, you need to stop that person from being able to buy. Like that that's kind of I mean, it might be a down the road situation, but once the money really starts moving, it, it's eventual. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's eventually. If anything, I, if anything I, again, it wouldn't make sense, like you said, Alan, it wouldn't even make sense for them to go after that because the artists themselves would be like, well, we're just not going to use these platforms. But I did say in the sense of like none of their moves are making sense. Our government just want money though, so I don't know. <laughs> like yeah, uh, but they putting all the money at the same time. So oh, you mean <laughs> uh, allowing transgender transgender oh, to? I'm talking about crypto here. Oh, okay. Here we I thought, go. I thought right, you were talking. Man, right. All right. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, fellas, all right. Here you go. Hey, <laughs> Pop, can you play us? Uh, uh, can you play us the uh, Chappelle show? Chappelle show. You should know to do that. Yeah. Oh, you know how you do. You oh, should man. be able to do that one, bro. I, I forgot that. Get those oh, chords, man. Oh, I'm sorry, God. bro. Oh, that put me on the spot. I forgot those chords. Oh. I, I used to be able to that. You can't have yeah. a guitar in your hand and not yeah. think you're gonna get put oh, on I'm the spot. Put bro. this away, bro. That's what I'm doing the most. Oh my day. Oh man. <laughs> All right, fellas. So uh yeah, any last thoughts, man? Uh I'll start with wait, you. Wait, wait, we didn't Black. even go oh, ahead. Wait. Go ahead. Oh, I, I said we, we, we do have about seven already? minutes. I try oh, to keep okay. it at two hours. I mean, we can go longer, but yeah. I you know, everyone here, I respect their time. I get that. I mean, we were about to touch base on uh the Harvard astronomer. Oh yeah, that can we just move into that for real quick? Did anyone read did anyone look into that? I mean, I know, it's not I know far fetched to me that aliens have been on planet Earth to answer that question. For me, possibly, I think it's one of those things where I mean, CB is in Detroit right now. We got way more things to worry about than aliens. So, yeah. I, who knows if it's true or not? But I do think the way a technology yeah, we, is we, we got zombies, right? <laughs> the way it's, the technology is accelerating is crazy. And by and large, I do think there are other life forms outside of Earth. And if that's the case, and we are going to go to space one day, we're not going to go there with cash. We're not going to go there with go. We're going to go there. With some type of digital currency. That's oh, nice way to tie. Nice way to tie that in the crypto. I love it. 
He's right. I love it. So we're, we're talking about this uh, Harvard uh, professor. This is kind of off the crypto uh, path here, ladies and gents. But um, this Uma, how do you pronounce this? Uamuma? I don't know how you pr- pronounce this object that's been flying around in the solar system. Um, and this guy is basically saying it's it can't be just an object because it sped up after it swung around the, the uh, sun. And he's essentially saying that, you know, other scientists have been ignoring so many signs that uh, we are not alone. What are your thoughts, Lenny Kravitz? Um, it's Umau Mau. And Umau uh, Mau. yeah, I think, okay, yeah. I think it's crazy, really. I th- but I, I believe that, like, they're here already. Like, they like there's this guy by name of, like Phil Collins or whatever. And he says that, like, they've got like a city underneath the planet and stuff and like, bro, they can, like, shoot beams of energy and stuff. Like, bro. Like, Phil I know Collins? The, yeah, I think that's his Popsicle name. Yeah, Phil. Toe? Nah, man, this guy had his his <laughs> hand. His hand was incinerated, completely melted off, bro. And he was talking about a bunch of, bro, I'm telling you, like, the government tried to kill him. Like, bro, it was, it's a crazy story, but it's real. <laughs> like, like. Yeah, look. All right. I don't know why. I think I'm thinking of Phil Collins as like the artist person, but I might be confusing. That's names. what I'm saying. Ain't like, that thanks. popsicle toes? <laughs> Phil Collins? Is it filling in the air? No, that's filling in the, the air. The tiger is filling in the air. Popsicle toes is uh, whatever. Okay. I can feel so, it. Tre- Treg, what, what are your thoughts about like other I mean, life forms and how does that play into, if any, play name. into what, we, what we're what we doing here on this planet, Blue Earth? I think... Um, all right, and I, again, I did not read this particular article. Sorry, I had X amount of other stuff going on. But in no the problem. general question of like extraterrestrial or other beings, like I'm gonna say yes. I think there's a let's just watch and see what they do. Like, let's see how long they could last on that dirt ball over there. That's blue. It, like, I sure. think that's hey. where we're at. Yo, his, his last name isn't Collins. It's uh, Schrodinger. Uh, Schrodinger. Yeah, Phil, Schrodinger. Phil Schneider. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, Phil Schneider. Schneider. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah, okay. excuse me. Yeah, okay. Phil Schneider. Yeah, dude, absolutely got his fingers like a blister, like literally viscerated, like from this beam of energy that came out of an extraterrestrial. And like there was this whole government cover up. His best friend died and everything. He died too. Oh, man, man, rest in peace. Man, but yeah, man. this like bro. He's saying that like the government has been like hiding this underground like base that these aliens have like lived in for the longest time and he just like breaks it down and stuff it's ridiculous i'm gonna post up this video inside the stream yards chat if you guys really want to hear this guy out but like hey like he lost his fingers like he, he doesn't have his fingers because uh, he's yeah how you know you cut him off because you sound crazy I don't know. Man. yeah Look. how do you know he didn't cut it off right Bro. he could have been on meth no man. This is my he, thing. So this is my man. thing about the aliens. Wow. I, do I think that there are other? Um, do I think there are other uh, uh, creatures or races out there? Um, There's not the human race. Certainly, one thousand percent, I do. At the same time, I think it's all. You know, think about when we. I, I think we're all in a similar age range. When we grew up, there was always these videos of like, oh, this is the alien ship. Oh, this is that. How come when everybody got a phone now and essentially a camera in their hand, we all those. <laughs> I, I right? thought about yeah. that, bro. That's I what I'm really, like. So, I have thought about that. My whole thing is everybody literally is walking around with a video camera in their pocket now. If these aliens were around in the sky like they used to be. So that means one of two things. They were never there. Or they know we have reached the, that point of technology where it's not safe for them to do that crazy stuff. Those are the two options. I do think they're real. I just don't. I look at time and universe on like different time scales. I think in our time scale is very small compared to like the grand, the grandness of everything. So you could have had a race completely light years away that existed and didn't get off his planet and died and we never known about I, it. Nobody I want people I want people to go check out, type in on Google Bob Lazar. The his oh, story. On, uh, Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was on Rogan. Yeah. He was on Rogan. Yeah. That man, check out his documentary. Yeah. It was deep, bro. Did you see the, the actual documentary? I did. I did. Yeah. It was good. What do you think about that? That story, Bob Lazar. 
Yeah, I think it's a pretty, listen. That one seems pretty compelling to me. He even did a lot of drugs and really told the story really well over and over to where it just seems supernatural. Natural, but, right. You know, until I'm, I need evidence. I Like, I need hard evidence, you know. So when I get some hard evidence, I'll believe they visited here. Do they exist somewhere in the universe? For sure, for sure. All right. Well, I guess that's a good way to end it tonight, ladies and gents. Mm-hmm. Two hours right on the dot. Um, let's let's start over here with King Bless. How can people find you, my man? Yes, check out check us out on YouTube, the gentleman of crypto dot or the gentleman of crypto. Just type that in YouTube. I'm thinking the website. Uh, our <laughs> website gentlemanofcrypto.com, YouTube, the gentleman of crypto, or on Twitter, the gentleman of crypto. You can find me there at all those. Gentlemen oh. of crypto. Oh, I'm subscribing to you right now, man. Appreciate it. I already followed you on Twitter, too, earlier when I was uh, asking for you all you guys' Twitter addresses. I got yours as well. And yeah, good combo uh, for sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Crypto Blood. Great combo. Of course, Trek, I always see you uh, every day when you when you jump in. And thanks for the support from you. Uh, nice formally meeting you, Tim Pound, and Alan as well, man. Still start, uh, yes, sir. So I'm glad to have these conversations with you all. All right, cool. All right, all right, King. I'll holler at you. So next we got uh let's do 10 pound man. Where can people well, find you, my friend? Hey, so um you can find me on uh Twitter at at TPS0011 and uh you know I'm no, on mines no. as well. I'm on Steam it um as 10 pound sterling as well, both those mediums. Um yeah, feel free to shoot me a DM. Cool, cool, cool. And Trek, I know you came in kind of the tail end, bro. Appreciate you coming in. Where can people find you? It's simple. Just put in any search bar, T-R-E-K-K-W, the number two, the letter K and S. No hashtags, a special character needed. And my stuff will always come up. And Alan, my man, Alan Henna, always a pleasure having you on, bro. All right, man. We'll find you. Yeah, real Alan Henna. Just like it is there on the window on Twitter. All right. There you go. Make sure you guys uh, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, definitely do that as well. I think uh, we are out of here, people. That's it. Episode 56. Holla. All right, man.